Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash cultural stew. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Please listen carefully. Welcome to the Cultural Stew Podcast, coming to you from the Goat Factory Media Entertainment Studios. We are your cultural media recommendation podcast, giving you our take on what we think is worth carving your time out for, and also what we think you can pass on and maybe go cut that lawn instead. Warning, we use adult language, and there may be spoilers ahead. Hello and welcome. My name is Ron Herkins, and this is the Cultural Stew Podcast for the week of October 21st. 2018. I am here with my co-host, Tony Carter and Valerie Vidmar. Hello. How is everybody? I'm all right. After our three-week hiatus. Uh, well, we're now. Yeah. It's been a fast three weeks. It kind of has, but um, <laughs> yeah, we um, did meet last week because of me, uh, Los Santo, but I went to uh, a... TLA conference in Vermont, and uh, I was. What's TLA? TLA is um, Transformative Language Arts. Okay, because I thought it was Tender Love Always. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it was at Goddard you know, uh, co- College, which is adorable. It's, it's it's about it's like going to camp. I mean, all of the dorms and everything were basically looked like cabins, but uh, I. What part of Vermont? Um, it was near Burlington, like an hour, okay. mm-hmm. like 45 minutes from Burlington. So I, my um, friend who was supposed to fly in to Rochester on Thursday, Thursday, and we were supposed to leave Friday, could not get to Rochester because of the storms. Uh, and so she was flown straight to Burlington. And so... That kind of threw a wrench in things, and I looked at Jason and said, oh, I kind of need to need leave today. So I went to the school and rearranged everything, and they were actually awesome. Um, Indy Landing, and they pulled my girls out of class so that I could say goodbye to them because I, they weren't expecting me to be gone. I thought that was sweet. Anyway, so I took off to Burlington and drove the entire way that was a good gas mileage. I mean, there's just a big, big tank. You took the truck. I did. Well, that's Oof. the only, that's the only yeah. one I have. And so, um, yeah, Burlington, we had a great time. I, My friend uh, Rhonda Miller, she's uh, an author of books and my good friend. And um, she's actually the, I'm going to get this wrong, probably the president of the Kansas Authors Club. I want to say that. Anyway, she and I are, I'm going to say, 20-ish years apart. So uh, I worked for her a long time ago. And we've just become, we've just stayed friends. And it was just like, we didn't see each other for like probably two or three years. And we just, I love that. Anyway, but I thought the conference was going to be, (laughs) I don't know, uplifting. It it sort sort of was. And I was going to have like, this time of writing and I thought it was going to be different, but it was very um, heavy subjects, which is fine. And um, heavy subjects, except that, you know, these people are amazing and the stuff they get through and you just listen to their stories and then um, you get to choose which one you want to go to because there's several. Mm -hmm. And then um, I was exhausted. (laughs) I was in the dorm. I got to sleep in the dorm again, which is so fun. Sorry. I love the dorm. Um, I was dead by nine. Nine o'clock, I was out. And so I didn't, yeah, really talk to home very much. But otherwise, it was great. And then we uh, drove back, and, and then I was getting ready for these parties that, that didn't happen. I taught chess to the Girl Scout troop. And then Harper got croup. Mm. Oh, so boy. so she was out of school on Friday. And we canceled the party on Saturday. And then Zoe woke up thinking that she had a croup. 
and she had a headache and didn't feel good. And then, I don't know. Now she's feeling fine. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure how I feel if she's really feeling fine or not. Sibling but. sympathy pains. I don't know. So yesterday was Harper's birthday. She turned six. So we made a rain. Kendra and I made a rainbow cape, which was a very interesting experience. And uh, that was really all Jason was gone to. Where'd he go? I think he was in D.C. this week. It's hard to keep track of him. So he's all over the place and kind of whipping through. But that was really my week. So back to Vermont. Yeah. Did you find ice cream? Oh, yeah. we went. To, I mean, I've been there before. So I did go to Ben and Jerry's. I did get, um, I got Kendra some socks from there. And I got myself a deck of cards because hmm. I like to collect deck of cards. This is a new thing, my collection of deck of cards. I don't know. Anyway, so. How many deck of cards do you have? I mean, I don't have very many. Oh. That's what I mean. So it's a new, a like new. New, new okay. thing. I just think they're kind of interesting. And you always need, I always need, I like playing cards, so I always like need cards. I thought we were going to play cards, but it didn't happen. So Vermont was, uh, oh, Ben and Jerry's, the original is what he's been speaking of. Uh, we went there and um, I just tried to sit there and kind of chill out. Burlington is an adorable town, beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, we went there at the perfect time. The trees were it was it was gorgeous. I mean, it really was gorgeous. So, and the tri- and the drive home, the drive there, I realized I hadn't driven by myself in over a year, and I hadn't, you know, driven the truck because I'd driven the girls to Kansas and back in the truck, um, mostly by myself. And I was going through all those turns, and there was somebody behind me, and I was through going through the mountains, and I am. Vermont's kind of squirrely with I some of the roads up there. I was kind of terrified. And I was, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And they can't pass me and I feel horrible. And I feel like, mm-hmm. you know, something like Jeepers Creepers is going to happen. And um, you have to see that. To, I'm not going to explain that. But um, so I finally made it to the hotel. This is so too long. I'm sorry. I may not make it to the hotel. I cannot find the hotel room i have too many bags because i had to leave quickly so i threw so much stuff in a bag and i had about five bags am i kidding she made so At least you have a truck me. <laughs> i know <laughs> and she was making fun of me but i could not find the room it was insane i was driving the truck around finally i parked it and then i'm like dragging all the stuff around it would have been really funny like if somebody was videotaping me it would have been really funny i put a little um it took me benny uh What's his name? The, and I just lost the joke. Benny Hill? <laughs> Benny Hill music to it. <laughs> yeah, if I was naked, maybe. Or partly naked. Just Benny Hill around. was always, had some weird kind of... He's British. He's just... Some sick humor about it. But <laughs> Mr. Bean, maybe. Not knowing what the hell he was doing. Yeah, mm-hmm. it took me 35 minutes to find a hotel room. Was this like a cottage or something? No. Room, or just a real no. like, motel, like a chain? We're talking chain. About. What, what chain? Um, you would ask me that. Mm. Uh, it was not Holiday Inn. Like Red Hilton, Rose. Hilton. Hilton. It was like a okay. Hilton Garden. I don't know. Mm. I don't even remember. So I'm, I'm just horribly directionally. I just cannot. I mean, when I walk in somewhere and then walk out, I have no idea which way I'm supposed to go. I'm one of those people. Mm. If I, yeah, I'm terrible. At least you recognize it. Yeah. I have to use. I'm around a lot of people who don't recognize it and they think that they have an excellent sense of direction. <laughs> I've never had it. My father, I think, <clears throat> still is irritated with me. My sister was born with it. Both of them. I mean, both of my sisters born with it. Me, totally lost. The only story they have of me is that I knew where I was going in Chicago when I was 18. I knew exactly where everything was. I don't know. I still use the um, Jeep, well, my phone to get mm-hmm. around here, to get around, not to here. I have, and I know how to get here now, but I used it four or five times before I could figure that out, which is very sad. Mm. 
But yeah, I had to use when we were at the Fringe Festival. Mm-hmm. I had to use it to get home. And Kendra said to me, my niece that's living with me, how long have you lived here? I wanted to slap her in the face. <laughs> I did not. And I thought, oh, do you do you know how to get home? Do you know how to get home? Can you just tell me how to get home? She gets at her phone. Oh, are you getting? Are you getting your phone? I'm so irritated. Yes, but I have had children, and I've been living in the burbs, and I don't go downtown. I don't mm. do this, so I have no idea. My thing with, with <clears throat> my thing with driving around downtown is like, if you ask me what street is what, I probably couldn't tell you, but I can get around easily. It's just I just remember things by sight and saying, "Oh, yeah, I just go this and this." But if you told me like, "Oh, you have to make a right on so and so street and a left on so and so street," I I couldn't give you those kind of directions. It's more like landmarks. Yeah. I'm more of a <laughs> I'm one of those people that if I'm downtown or if I see like that I can see that either Jiva or the Play Museum are going to be around the area, I'll make my way there and then I'll go home from there. Oh. Because I know how to get home from there, so it takes me longer because I go home from places that I know how to get home from. Makes sense. Which is ridiculous. Yeah. It takes me a lot longer. But yeah. I don't know shortcuts. Jason's shortcuts, if you ask my children about Jason's shortcuts, they are long. A five-minute lore. <laughs> oh, it's like 20 Five minutes. Five minutes turns into a 20-minute long shortcut. <laughs> well, he says, I just like to change my route. I don't sure. like to see the same thing every time. I just like to I do experience that on, things. I'm like, I like to get where I'm going. I do that on occasion. Like if we've driven something like 15, 20 times, I'll like, okay, I'm just going to randomly take a different route and figure out how to get home because I kind of feel like it's building that map inside my head of like memory. Of oh, just sure. like, oh, we're filling in this block of things I've never seen before. So we'll just drive That's, this route. I'm sure he does that. Um, <laughs> but. Oh, my gosh. We had a girl car and a boy car, meaning filled with girls and boys, um, coming back from Lake Placid. And the girl car was just ready to get home because we had the girls. So it was Kendra and I and the girls ready to get home. Jason had um, Dustin and Ryan, and they wanted to stop off at a park and relax. <laughs> and I said, well, we'll see you at home. Oh, my gosh. She was so mad at me. i like, are you kidding me? This is about four years ago, five years ago, the kids were little. It's like, I'm getting the hell home. I need to get out of this damn car. But, oh my God. He's like, you just never experienced life. I experienced life plenty. I just need to get home. <laughs> so I can put the kids to bed. So then I can this was life. after you've already spent mountain time and yeah, you know, you'd already been experiencing. Oh, I've been experiencing life. <laughs> I mean, I want my, my ashes spread over Mirror Lake. But yeah, sounds like a fun couple weeks and yeah. Sorry, I talked way too long. I hope somebody else has a shorter week. Mm. Your hair's gone. You want to go? Yeah, my hair is gone. I got my hair cut yesterday, so uh, preparing for that and hockey season stuff still. So had to be shaved so I can fit my helmet the way I want and not sweat all over my face. And thank you so much for making me look like a complete idiot on Facebook. What? What did I do? Yeah. What did I do? I'm guessing the quote. The oh. quote. <clears throat> I had no I, no clue. See. And I was so confused. Okay. So every year for uh, my uh, friend mentor's birthday, Mario, shout out for Mario Silvestano, I do um, the Morocco line because we, that's an inside joke that we don't want to be around anymore. We want to go someplace else because we're bored, almost famous. Yeah. So um, I always ask him, I'm thinking about going to Morocco for a year. Do you want to come? Which is weird because Morocco is one of the places that I always wanted to go. So it was very weird. And I thought, <laughs> this is strange and I feel weird. <laughs> and is this is because I was like, I've seen Almost Famous once, so it wouldn't have popped out as a quote to me. I thought, and is, I was like, is his wife reading odd. his Facebook? Because <laughs> this is. But I'm like, it has to have done with something that. Maybe you two had mentioned that. Could, could you I next dismissed. time put quotes around? Please? No. Ugh. That's the point. It's supposed to be. Ah. I'm going to do that to you. You should. I will. It'll be exciting. Um, other than that, uh, blowing up her wall and embarrassing her and whatnot. Um, yeah. Hockey training as always. I, my face is shaved. To, sorry. Um, no hair on my head. And that's always fun. You're like a swimmer. Yeah. You shave the rest. I, I, never mind. What? Nothing. 
No, I have friends who shave all their hair, body hair, when they went swimming for a swim team. Yeah. Um, but I shave my hair on my face and my head because when I sweat, I, I break out. So when I play hockey, I need to have my face and I need to let the sweat just drop and fall off. But um, that's not the fun part. The fun part for me was I spent two weeks or seven days, but it became two weeks because we started on a Monday and then we had a conference day at school. So the judge was interesting. We had... A week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. He had a prior appointment on Thursday with his wife. And then we came back Friday. And then we had Columbus Day, fake holiday, on uh, Are you talking about jury Monday. duty? Yes. Oh, okay. I had jury duty. And uh, it was fun, minus the threatening gestures by the defense's family um, and that fun thing. Okay. Um, it was a murder trial. Uh, I could talk about it now. Terrence Lewis was convicted of being, well, second-degree murder. Um, fun experience. Uh, I've been hearing rumors, which are not really rumors, but that the defense is going to try to appeal the mm-hmm. verdict because, you know, the jury was not a jury of the defense's uh, peers. But here's the thing. The jurors were selected by the defense and the prosecution. They did come to an agreement. I don't know if people know that or not, but both sides have to want the same juror. It can't be one-sided that way. That's correct. So uh, the defense was like, oh, no, well, it wasn't a peer panel. It was just one. It was only African-American on Did it have to be unanimous or did it have to be? It had to be unanimous, yeah. So, yeah, um, it was a fun time. I spent that long, and then I got back to school, and it's been a, a, last week was my first week fully back, and it's an adjustment period, and yeah. But jury duty is fun. I just wish I was talking to Ron about this. They should pay for our parking. They don't pay for parking. That should be this should for. be thing validated parking. I um, don't think about that. Well, so. we were having a pre chat conversation. There's a lot that I think needs to be revamped to make jury duty more appealing as yeah. a right. Right. Well. <laughs> I mean, speaking as a judge's daughter, um, good job for showing up and doing your duty and not shirking it. Man, nothing pisses a judge off. I tried to kind of half-heartedly get out of it, but then they found out who I knew, and they said, no, no. And I said, I have a babies at home. No, you're, we want you. You're good. So If you're, if it was your wife, she would have gotten out of it. My wife. Well, I, that's how I was bring, brought up to him and said, my wife has gotten out of jury duty two or three times because she had the mm-hmm. kids at home. And then when I went, um, you know, my bo- my company was only going to pay like a very small amount of it. And it's like, okay, well, I'm the only sole provider. We don't right. have a savings account with, the, with money in the background. So you're going to excuse a person who's not making money, but you're going to not excuse the person who's the money is bringing in income. So it's like we would have been off of income for two weeks yeah. and never gotten that money back. And they're only going to give you forty dollars back, which then you have to pay ten dollars right. for parking right. daily. It's like oh, you get forty bucks. Yeah, yeah, it's we the get. the maximum allotment. And Just then I think TV. it's was it eighty for grand jury? Yes, something like that. I mean, I'm lucky. My job paid for the but, first five days of my jury's duty. That's cool. And then there's two days that they are not paying for, which we were kind of contesting. So don't get mad, Mayor Cariola. I'm putting you on the spot. Just do the right thing. But um, it was fun. Uh. I got to use part of my brain that I haven't used in a while, which is nice. Um, got to meet some people. It's disturbing. Open. What do you My brain or jury duty? Jury duty. <laughs> <laughs> Both. Um, jury duty. I mean, when I, I went to see a lot of jury cases when I was little. So I would go and sit um, and listen to. I would love to sit in that room. I mean, now I can just go to court and sit there with my notebook and just watch. And I used to get transcripts. Yeah. And it's just, I mean, I respect it as a right and I'll always honor the right to, to do it. It's just one of those. And I'm sure somebody, there's politicians have gone through this whole thing. But I I think there needs to be something passed that makes employers pay a full wage. I and agree. then the government reimburses it. Absolutely. So then you ensure that you actually get a jury yes. I of agree. people that want to be there instead of every single person trying to look to get out of it. And, right. and then you end up with... You know, people that, you know, they may be homeless or they may be on a very low income. So they're happy to be there because they're getting paid. That's right. the reason for most of them being there, not because they're happy for their right to be there. Well, um, it's a it's a very fine line. There's still people that would be able to make that decision. But you know what I mean, there's still people that. I mean, yeah, would be able my to. wife has an issue where she wants to do jury duty. We both like law. We both watch law and order, that kind of stuff. We find that very fascinating. But the thing is, my wife's in a position where she can't really, like, 
take time off because she works for the hospital. She works for two doctors, the chair of her department, and then Where a new she doctor. At? She's uh, orthopedics department. She's the clinical secretary, so oh. she's scheduling, helping schedule appointments, cool. that kind of thing. And she wants to take off, but she feels like if she were to be gone for more than like two days, everything will fall apart. Yeah, she was gone for maternity leave, and things are kind of slowly falling apart in her office. So she realized that she wants to do it, and they would probably let her do it. They would pay her. And it's in her handbook. They would pay her for every day she was gone. That's nice. But she feels like she'll leave her bosses, you know, to dry and it would be good for it's them. It's like like leaving for the weekend. Yeah. yeah. And then coming home to your house. And there's, an, like, there's an interesting ethical <laughs> dilemma behind it that I think that's just like, yeah, do do you as a person like say, hey, I can, I, I'm a living week to week. Am I going to abandon my family for a I don't civic know if they duty? Could, I don't know if they could pay everyone's salary. They I mean, you think the jerk the they probably could. I'm just saying that that'd be that some. It could be a lot of money. Yeah, but, but that's. I, I mean, I, I'm kind of boring, so that was the excitement for me. Besides my writing, that's and not boring. Not, well, I mean, I enjoy. It. Some people are like, "Oh, Drake. did it help yeah. spark anything in as far as writing is concerned, or no? Not really. I mean, I always have ideas and things like that. I mean, I have a, a court drama I'm working out in my head, but it kind of helped inspire it more. My thing is just. Uh, I, I, I work in a high school slash middle school, so the rumors are rampant. So when I got to school on my Thursday from coming back for a day off, we thought you quit. We thought you got fired. I'm like, who, what? And the teachers are like, oh, how's jury duty? So the teachers knew, but the staff were like, we thought you got fired. We thought you quit. I'm like, what? So, yeah, a lot of rumors were spread rapid huh. fire. It's That's weird. But it was a learning experience coming back from using the investigative part of my brain to come back to school and everything slows down. And So think there was tons of evidence? Not really. A lot of like piecing the games together. I mean, for me, honestly, my background, it was fine because I knew automatically even here, I had an open mind. So you did. Or did Vincent, you, you don't be mad at me, the judge. I had open mind, but my background informed me right away. This guy's guilty. He knew what he was doing, why he was doing it. He got in the car. And in my background experience, you know what your homies are doing when you get in the car and you're playing a vendetta. So you are an accessory. You could easily say no. Even if you don't want to, you could still say, no, I'm out. But this guy knew, and yeah. But it was just convincing my other jurors who were um, all white from the suburbs and sheltered, as they called themselves. So they understand gang warfare, understand gangs in African American. They said, Tony, when you were growing up, did you have a gun on you? And I'm like, no. But my parents, side note, my parents, that whole shooting that happened, yeah. my parents lived down the street from that incident so i couldn't even talk Last to my parents week. i was like sequestered where i couldn't even talk to my parents about anything they said don't watch the news don't talk to anyone about what happened so my parents just sent me a text saying safe and that's all i knew <sighs> and then i had deputies go to my house because you know to protect my parents but it's, it's like you're so isolated in that room that you don't know what's going on in the outside world the judge knows the lawyers know but the juries don't know and again i kind of try to get out of it because i have a now four month old at home and a almost three year old at home, but sure. the judge is like, "No, we need you on this juror." And the defense thought so, and so did the prosecution. So, okay, there you go. But you know, I'm sure Ron had more exciting things going Ron? on. Ron, yeah. uh, I'm just gonna make it short. I did some video stuff. I did some photography stuff. I went to Canada. Canada's awesome. Ooh. So, <clears throat> moving on on today's docket, we're gonna discuss a little bit about the news we care about. Uh, go through our recommendations or not recommendations of the week. Uh, I'm going to do bad times. I think Valerie's got Veronica. Is that? That's not what I'm going to talk about. No. Well, you've got like 15 things in there, so she'll find something. Because I always do the wrong thing. <laughs> I always put it in the wrong place. So I'm you're sorry. not going to talk about any of those. I'm where? We'll no, there I am going to talk about guess what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> I'm going to talk about a Star Is Born. Well, it's from the, from that list, I wouldn't have picked that out because well, Veronica is the only one that you like put extra details in. I said I saw it three times. Mm. Yeah, there. <laughs> is that better? <laughs> I get confused as to where I'm supposed to put recommendations and where I'm supposed to put things. I'll make a map that I've seen. Ugh, I'm sorry, right. I do it every time. It's terrible. And Anthony is going to talk about the almond. The almond. Cool. The yes. omen. The omen. Okay. The Almonds. almond. <laughs> almond. <Yeah. laughs> omen. Sometimes Almonds. you feel like a nut. I do. Sometimes, sometimes you don't. 
Um, that's going to take us into today's stew, which is going to be Valerie. Oh, I'm sorry. I was talking, I was thinking about <laughs> Almond. Almond Joy because I, I really enjoy <laughs> Almond Joy. Almond Joy. Almond Joy. Um, uh, let's rename all of our favorite I was, candies with uh, uh, The Stew is about horror movies and what makes them scary to you. Um, I recommended that we watch The Exorcist. But <laughs> when was that it was recommended? This morning. <laughs> Like Friday? <laughs> no, like this morning, wasn't it? Or no, like no, like no, no, no. It was like Tuesday. The people. message never got sent through. Oh, okay. It was Tuesday. Okay. I've seen it a long time ago. I feel like it was, it was later than that. Yeah. I wrote about something else, I think. Maybe you're right. I don't know. Anyway, The Exorcist. Um, but I can talk about it and you can try to remember it. <laughs> and I um, just... Uh, Maybe film the filmings, the filmings. My gosh, how about the cinematography of um, a movie or how the cameraman uses the horror? Yeah, uh, the music or you know what scares you. So I was okay. I, that works. I, so I was just kind of, and then some of the top movies that you have watched that have, if they scared you, have you ever been scared? If not. That's fine, too. And then we will wrap up with some of the news that we care about. Or not. <laughs> we, need, we know what you mean. We're talking about more news? Uh, no, we're not going to wrap up with news we care about. We're going to wrap up with what's on our radar and what's in our queue. So first, we're going to go into the news that we care about. What happened this week? Let's see. Um, we found out news that Orange, Orange is the New Black and Luke Cage are... Ending soon. And Iron Fist. Iron Fist, too. They're all ending. Netflix is dropping axes on things, which I never yeah. thought they would do. Well, Orange is the New Black is kind of run its course. I agree. agree. Um, I've, I've, I've watched every season so far, and this season we're like three episodes in, and I really haven't felt a push to keep going back and try to like, okay, what happens next? It was more like, okay, I'm kind of getting bored with the story. Okay. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> every every show eventually hits that point when they're like, you've gone on too long, and they're still going to throw out one more season. I thought that way with Arrested Development, but that's totally off topic. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Um, Iron Fist, I'm okay with it closing or ending. Um, Luke Cage, I'm a little bit more like, eh, there was a big open-ended thing on that. So... Hopefully, this signals that they're going to go into the other stories, which is the the I think it's the daughters of the dragon. Okay, which focuses more on um, the new Iron Fist, and you know, and that would also mean Heroes for Hire is going to happen because that would mean Luke Cage and Iron Fist team up because that's what Heroes for Hire was. And, you can only uh, hope. Well, had- if both shows canceled their individual things, okay. it makes sense to me, especially seeing how Danny and uh, Luke okay. played around. Like, hey, you're going to have this half of the city. I'm going to have this half of the city okay. kind of thing. So, yeah, that was our little bit of a superhero news. Um, in non-so-superhero news, uh, I saw Idris Elba. And the Dame Judy Dench both got cast in the Cats movie. I know. I saw that this morning. <laughs> so it keeps getting stranger. That is I have so... no interest in seeing this movie. No. But you keep throwing people that are like <laughs> it. So it's like, That's damn it, point. stop it. Kendra will definitely go. So, yeah. Ugh. What else would we Maybe got? it'll be good. I don't know. I mean, maybe it'll be good. Um I think, let's see here. Where are the things I care about? Did I even write news I cared about? Yeah, I did. You, um, you changed to purple, so yes. I did, because I felt like pink was too stereotypical. I didn't really like it. So um, I just was shocked to hear, even though I didn't see, I haven't seen it yet. And I feel like I missed it. And I missed it in IMAX, maybe. Um, first man bombed in a way. It bombed to the point where they didn't make as much as they thought they would, and they didn't have as many people go as they thought 
world. That was, I mean, Ron and I talked about that briefly too before. Um, and I'm still not sure the word bomb is right. I mean, I saw headlines, but maybe that's not the right that's word. That's what I mean. I think that it was sandwiched between two, Stars Born and Venom, the wrong weekend. Venom, I and think. Yeah, over, it couldn't come, by, it should have been by itself or a different Like timing. Lady Gaga yeah. and Venom, yeah. I think, is what happened. And, you know, I said that if it would have come out a different time, it would have been just it would have just been just fine when they described the movie it does sound like something i still really want to see because it, it deals more with the emotional issues and and it deals with their marriage deals with domestics the, yes which you know i like i like that stuff mm-hmm. um so i will definitely still want to be seeing that but i went i uh i haven't seen i know seen there were some political things that came out a couple of weeks before it came out. The flag situation, you mean? The whole flag situation yeah. and that what? he was being represented by a Canadian and not American. What? Yeah. Oh. So there's a whole little bit of a political component. What flag attack. situation? I'm they sorry. didn't show the flag being planted. They did. They did? They did. It's the way they were talking about it, they were oh. making it sound like they didn't, but it was coming from an article of somebody who hadn't seen the movie. Oh. And they completely destroyed it, and the whole group of political people grabbed onto that, attacked it, and attacked it. And then Trump, Trump, Trump. you have a whole bunch of a certain population all of a sudden said, "Nope, we're not going to see this movie. What's we're not going to support it." Especially since there's a Canadian in the lead. What's with the? What's that? It's a telephone. It's like telephone. That's a really bad game of telephone. Um, it's and then stupidity. Halloween has come out, or it's kind of come out. I think it did come out of it. Did it, it come had out? A Seventy-seven million launch. So, oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Just kidding. So, uh, Halloween coming out, having that happen, then Bohemian Rhapsody coming out, and Fantastic Beasts. I worry that it's not going to get its time. I just feel like, why didn't the producers look around a little bit? Maybe they thought Ryan Gosling could carry it, but there were so many things coming out. Sometimes it's the only window they have. So. I, I guess so. I would have waited until July when the anniversary, but that's just me. Just my thought. But, uh, July would have been great because there's crap in, in the summertime. Well, not always. Well, a it's lot. busy. I'm sorry. But you, you mean not, yeah. There's and, a lot of movies that aren't as good. Good. That's what I mean. It could be an Oscar push, too, I believe, is why it came out now. So. I know. Sad. But who knows? We could still. We can make come it. back. We can bounce back. But yeah. That's what. I'm asking if Halloween going out. My brain's not functioning, but yeah, Halloween has made seventy-seven point five million. That's not too bad. No, not too bad for a guy that's been in the mental insane asylum for a while. <laughs> Who just walks around? I just don't get it. I don't get it either. I don't I get it. I mean, Kendra wants to go see it. I don't get it. I just he walks around with a mask on, just walks around, never runs, walks, and still can catch up to people and figure it out he knows all the shortcuts jason needs to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> i uh but i've never been a halloween person so or friday the 13th yeah. i think i've seen all the halloweens and all the friday the 13th and i don't think any wow. of them stand out to me that's impressive. like even like was it jason verse Fre- jason verse oh man i did see that i walked out oh. i like nothing really like that was horrible. In them stood out, like except for the original of being like, "Hey, yeah, this, you know, it was the birth of the the slashers." And See, I don't like slashers. Yeah, there's nothing scary about them. It's like, oh, there's a guy behind the closet. Don't open the closet door. And then what do they do? Open, open the, closet. the closet door. Oh, Kendra and I last night watching this movie. Right? Like, okay, she's gonna be yeah. a girl in a horror movie. There she goes. Yeah. And I think that's the problem with like how horror movies have become for me. It's like. It's very hard to be an original in a horror movie and like, like, oh yeah, you know exactly what's, what's going to happen. I think that's why I like Buffy because Buffy was very shocking and at the time when it came out and it wasn't predictable for me because like I said before, horror doesn't do anything for me. My co-writer, Teresa, is all about them. so she likes to write, but it's like, I've not seen an intelligent horror film in a very long time. That's something that makes me like, oh wow, that was good writing. That was good production value. The acting was great and the story moved me. So I'm still looking for that, I guess. Hmm. So I'm sure there was much more news than that, 
but that was all the stuff that kind of stuck out to me. There was a bunch of trailers that came out. Um, the Aladdin one. I saw that one. That was weird. Wasn't it was. It? it was weird. Yeah, the Aladdin. It was, the yeah, it was. You know, they had the, the classic cues in the background <sighs> and then going into the, uh, what's the... The lion's head. Well, which is the, cavern. Lion, that's the one lion, thing that scared the, the crap out of my girls. That's why they didn't. Want, I mean, why did you put this in the trailer? They just showed the first like opening sequence, basically without the whole sky pan situation. But I mean, this should be good. I mean, it's going to be authentic. And there's one actor I forget his name, but he's like in everything now. He was in Merlin, played Arthur, but he's playing a prince. Um, Can I ask something? You, is this yeah. one of those? I hate to ask this yes. question. Is really ignorant? Is this this is a musical? Yes, yes. live action yeah. musical, just like Mulan is going to be. And yeah, Disney's oh, just like, taking like all Beauty of their, and the Beast, mm-hmm. like that kind of thing. Okay, and Cinderella. Oh yes, right. And I'll be okay. They, 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 they enchanted and enchanted wasn't as much of a musical, but Cinderella they didn't sing. Mm. Yeah, they did. And Maleficent they didn't sing. Cinderella. Which did Cinderella are we talking about? The latest one or the one with the big blue dress That's on the mean, cover? I'm I not thought there was singing in Cinderella. No. Well, I mean, I don't because I thought the lead was a singer. I don't remember. Yeah. Anyway, anyways, if, we might be wrong. That's Sorry. how important that movie was to me. Is it stuck out so much? I'm kind <laughs> I of just didn't remember waiting for singing. Lion King to come out and see what they do with that. That's what I'm kind of waiting to see how they mess that up or overwhelm. I just am not looking forward to any of these coming out. I'll watch them just because I'll watch them. I thought Gosh. Jungle Book was kind of cool. Which like, I like did the CGI too. in okay. that was amazing. I did too. And they had they had the classic song in there. I loved how big the animals were. I loved that. I did think the, that was fun. Uh, we had a funny experience with that, like with the wolves. 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 My thumb was. Um, Ollie was sitting on the couch. Ollie's our male boxer. And the whole time he's just like, Every time the the wolves started You're making turning noise, your head. he just kept turning his head. There you go. And it was watched the whole film from beginning to end. Really? Just completely enthralled. I'm just like, this is insane. <laughs> You're just enjoying it. And every time they would talk, he'd just like, what's that? What's that? Huh? See, what? dogs could sit next to us and watch movies too. He does it frequently and it freaks the crap out of me because we're like, you like wave your hand in front of his his head and he'll just keep on watching TV. This and I've sh- kind of researched it a little bit to like say like can dogs actually see the TV? And it has to do with like how many lines or how many is it the hertz that it's on? Like we when we went up to 1080p and um 4K, we switched into 120 and 240 lines of hertz. Uh-huh. Um and dogs see things at a different rate, refresh rate than we do. And so the older flickering uh, CRT right. type uh, stuff is generally below a 60 hertz. Or no, I think it was at they 60 hertz. It. And they can hear it, but to their vision, they couldn't like make out what it was. So it would just be like that. But with the faster refresh rates and everything, they can actually see it. And I want so a dog we think that to watch he's now like me. reacting to like, it's like him looking through a window hmm. at times. So right. there's something that catches his eye, and then all of a sudden he's like, he's focused on it for a while. We're trying to. The girls and I, now the now all three girls and I are trying to get Jason to get a dog. Mm. He is vehemently against it. Really? Why? I have a, I Dogs have a, awesome. I have a. Theory. Did he get bit by a dog when no, he was younger? I think that when his dog passed away. Sorry, honey. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. When his dog passed away. Welcome to therapy sessions with Valerie Vidmar. Yeah, I when I psychoanalyze people, which yeah. Um his dog passed away when he was in college. I don't think his parents told him to go at home or something because I think he was going through tests or something. I can't remember. But um they didn't tell him, I I don't believe. And then he loved that dog. Buddy. Buddy was a girl. B U D D I E. And I feel like I don't know if he can go through that again. And when Meryl dies, Meryl Streep, our kitty, who loves him, I got her. But anyway, 
he's gonna have a hard time. Yeah, it's, just it's rough when an animal's been with you for a long time, and I just don't he think he wants. To, he doesn't like to deal with emotions that make you sad. So I feel like the dog. He knows the dog is going to eventually die, and he doesn't want his girls to go through it. He doesn't want to go through it. He, it's it's a tough time, but my trade off for that is the joy that it brings to I daily know. life. But he also says that it basically locks you down, and you can't do anything, and you have you can't to you have to come home. Everybody has to leave early because they have to let their dog out, no. and then when they go, you can't just run off and go to the Adirondacks because you have to. St- have somebody take care of your dog and then there's money and you have to i mean he just feels like once you get a dog your life is over well let me size up that when we first got amelie my corgi um you named it amelie yeah thank you so um i know we i told grace this is like our baby okay so we need to start acting like responsible people now which that was still ridiculous to say back then like eight years ago but um still we would have fun finding places that let dogs stay there that was our like our our fun little chore, like, oh, we're going to you know Chicago. Let's find a hotel that will let us have our dog. I, I already know some guy that, he gotta, that will watch the dog. We'd rather take our pets with us. Like we take our cat and our dog with us when we go on vacations because we just want them there. And, oh my gosh! Yeah, it just be, it becomes an it, like an interesting component of planning. Yeah, I mean there is ways to figure it out, but is it know. want to have a, a dog shed? No shedding. My that's why we kind of went with the boxers is because they have a low shed rate, and so. The dog that we had before we went to the boxers was an Akita Shepherd. And, like, you're talking, like, tufts of hair everywhere. That's what my dog has, yeah. But if you get something that's a, a doodle, something a doodle. Doodles are, yeah. yeah. The kind I, I love boxers because of they just got so much character. That's why we went with them. And the shedding was just kind of a side effect. Do they have a retriever or a doodle? Probably not. I don't know you to look it up. <laughs> All I know is that I took my dog to Letchworth one year, and she was smiling the whole time. Just, you see her walking, like my dog literally smiles, and you see her smiling, walking, just gating, and just proud as she's on a leash walking in the woods. So. I'm telling you, I'm taking one up to the Adirondacks. It's just, I mean, that would be heaven. His for them. front, have it be his buddy. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I and we. The dog I, would be out running with him all the time. Right. I know, I know, I know. Come on, Jason. You know you want to. And it would it when will. he's gone all the time. I just want a dog that barks. Yeah. And um, he'd be, he'd be a the, watcher at, over your family when at you're the gone. appropriate times because we will have a trained dog. Mm, good luck with that. I grew up with a no, mine are completely my trained, trained too. Oh my mine's trained too, my, but she has moments. My yeah. dad, yeah, you have to have a trained dog, mm-hmm. it's not an option. So, um, I was going to say something else and I totally forgot what Welcome. it was, but anyway, later, <laughs> you always say that just don't go to Lollipop Farm. Wink, wink, and don't go to um, uh, Verona Street. Wink, Just wink. do your research. That's all I say. We have a while. To do go. your research. Know the background of a dog. So he said to it's, me. It's hereditary lines are very important. <laughs> I will say there's a new Corky movie coming out. I'm going to put this out there, people. I have oh. a Corky. Uh, there's a new Corky 3D CGI movie coming out. Don't get a Corky because it looks cute on TV. Corgis are high maintenance. The queen may have... 12 corgis, but she's not interacting with them at all. She has trainers who deal with them. Corgis are fun and fluffy and great, but they're also high maintenance. Don't get a Dalmatian either. Yeah. Um, That's it. What I was going to say was if I wouldn't have had a dog during a a particular rough time in my life, I mean, the dog, I wouldn't say saved me. That's not the word. But um, that was the dog was my best friend, man. I spent all my time with that dog. And so... It was my wife was not a dog person. She grew up with cats. That's all she ever knew in her life. And basically tricked her into getting our first boxer, even though we had our other dog. So once she passed, my wife wasn't as connected with her. And so we ended up with a boxer. And then like a couple months later, we ended up with a troubled boxer through family that like He was six months old. He wasn't trained. He had abuse problems. And so he came into our life and she was just like, no way. And so I just trained the hell out of him, got him, you know, it took, it took almost a year. Yeah. Yeah. Trained all my dogs. I don't like other people training him because I just have a very specific way of them. And when he died uh, a couple of years ago, she, she just 
you know, she broke apart and still to this day it affects her but it's just like she became a dog person because of that dog because he attached herself to her and it's just like it's they have a dog uh at my children's school they, they got a dog this year. Mm-hmm. they are helpful so they go in and, and they have um dog is that pet therapy is that yes. what it's called mm-hmm. And it's, wonderful. I think it's good for kids too to be around dogs as much as possible because I, I agree. there are too many people I know that have never been around a dog. And then when they are near them in their 20s or 30s or 40s, they do things that dogs view as aggressive. Mm-hmm. And they don't think that they're doing anything aggressive. But the dog just like, well, what, are you, what are you doing? And then that's only instills that further piece in there but anyways anyway get a dog speaking of dogs pet cemetery trailer came out i saw that one too that looks creepy as hell it looks so much better so (laughs) much better the last last the last shot with the kid going into the and then the pet cemetery on the the sign written in wood yeah i was like gauge and i was was like i was freaked i was not freaked i was like um Excited because like the day before, all we saw was an image of the cat sitting in the middle of the highway. I'm like, oh, we're going to get a trailer. And they didn't announce anything and then it just dropped the next I'm day. I'm very excited because the first the, the first movie they made was bad. I thought it was bad. Sorry. But uh, Pet Cemetery was the first novel I read, the first Stephen King I read. I read it when I was in fourth grade, probably a little young, but I um, was given it to by a Good friend. And uh, I loved it. And I, you know, maybe Pet Cemetery, reading Pet Cemetery in my closet with a, a flashlight. <laughs> anyway, maybe I was in fifth grade. I don't know. But um, maybe that's what started my love of horror. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I have. I a, was not know. scared. I have so among the not only ha, I have uh, a couple of the interviews still to finish up and get them launched, and one of them is with Danny, and he talks about Stephen King and you know Stephen King. It just I really love his writing. I do, and he wrote a book about writing, and I love that book that he wrote. I he's I love that man. Anyway, I just please nothing come out about Stephen King. So yeah, I've got a couple of Stephen King. Uh, I guess, yeah, there was something about Stephen King that was, oh yeah, that moved, that show based on Stephen King stuff. <laughs> we watched the, the, um, tell me the series that we finished up. Remember? You finished up Castle Rock. You didn't finish it? My Hulu description says it expired. Oh, so dude. I did not get a chance to finish it before everything else. Sorry. So. Anyway, but yeah, that was really fun. And, uh. I was talking to Kendra because she hadn't seen some of the stuff, and don't, don't, don't spoil this movie, okay? But I just said that the mist made me think. I I could not stop thinking about that movie for a long time. The mist. The mist. Yeah. The last fifteen they minutes just came out with a series, The Mist. I think it was on for like a year. And then they had the, the dome wasn't his, was it? Not sure. I don't know. Um, but anyway. <clears throat> Did anybody see the Kidman trailer, Destroyer? No. I wanted to. If you haven't had a chance. Oh, well, that was a new trailer that came out. I just didn't get a chance to look at it. I um, didn't see it. Um, the new Glass trailer. Glass trailer. Um, Vice sorry. trailer. Um, What's Vice? Vice has got Christian Bale as Dick oh, Cheney. Yes, yes, and yes. And Sam Rockwell, Rockwell. as what? President Junior. Bush. And... Steve Carell as Donald Rumsfeld. I'm gonna watch and that. And Amy good. Adams as Libby. Libby. I think yeah. it's his wife, Shane's yeah. wife. Um, so it's the same team that was behind the Big Short, and also Anchorman. <laughs> um, Should be good. It looks it good. Looks, what is it? What's it covering? It's covering the. It's so the trailer uh, breaks out with uh, basically Bush trying to get Dick Cheney to come on board as vice okay. president, and basically. Dick is saying, well, I'm going to be in charge of this, 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 and this, and this. So the story that basically we all grew up knowing that basically, yeah, Dick Cheney was basically the president and George Bush was more of just a talking head kind of thing. This kind of exemptuates or accentuates that a little bit. I didn't know that. Yeah. 
Yeah, it just it's a really interesting, and Christian Bale is all in full on makeup and Can't looks wait. like two hundred to three hundred pounds. I miss George Bush so much now. Mm. I just want to share that. Anyway, <laughs> um, I did see the Netflix uh, trailer for the Kaminsky Method, uh, which has Alan Arkin and Michael Douglas in it. Um, I think that looks really good. I really. It just came out on Friday, didn't it? The trailer. Yeah, I. I didn't catch that. I saw. I went through and I saw. Oh, Michael Douglas. I, Ooh, Alan Arkin. I really looks really good, but it deals with feelings. I just want to share. He talks. Alan Arkin actually says, <laughs> "It's out for me." <laughs> life is is pain or like pain. He uses a word that is pain or something. Life and pain and life is pain and yeah. Whatever, but the, yeah, it deals with feelings. So I don't know about that for you. You may want to watch the trailer and see how you feel. And then who put in Red Dead? That would be me. Right, you're green. I'll talk more about this later. Okay. The, but the Red Dead launch trailer is yes, it officially launches this Friday. I don't know what that is. Red Dead Redemption. It's a, game. a gaming party for you. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I, I put the link in there so you can actually watch it so you can see what I'm talking about. I know I didn't get to see that yet. So you think that wraps up our news today? I think so. That's so enough. Roll into our recommendation list with Valerie, who saw... Hmm. Okay, I'm something. sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I saw A Star is Born. Uh, I don't know what to say about this. Okay, so Kinder, I took Kinder um, to... She is a Lady Gaga fan. Lady Gaga is for Paul McCartney. I'm going to preface this... Before you finish, I am not a Lady Gaga music fan. That's fine. But I'm going to chime in because I did it too, see A Star is Born. Okay. So. I'm so happy. Okay. So uh, we went to the premiere and got picks, which I thought was fun. Guitar picks with the Star is Born. Well, not picks. Yeah, no. Not ice <laughs> picks. We got, we got, anyway, we went in there and uh, we were probably two minutes late. Where'd thought, you see it? Uh, it's in town. Hmm. And um, they were already started, but we didn't miss anything. We started what? The movie or the trailers? The movie. Oh. Because it was a preview. It, I, I, it just started. Oh. I wasn't expecting that. But we um, didn't miss much at all. Maybe there was one trailer, I think. Anyway, so because uh, the next time we saw it, <laughs> we said, oh, we didn't really miss much. I had a phone call that I had to take during the first one, so I missed 20 minutes of it. Um. And then the second time I saw it, we went at 11 o'clock in the morning, which is a rough time for me anyway. Um, I cried probably for 65% of the movie. I mean, Kendra was kept putting her hand on my leg. You didn't fall asleep though. No, I cried. No, I did, I did not fall asleep. And then I went with my friend who, with Rhonda. Mm-hmm. Who I, like, just, uh, I thought, you want to go see it? Yep. So Kendra was pissed. <laughs> that I went to go see it by, without her. Again? <laughs> um, so this movie's been out for, gosh, not long. Two weeks. Two weeks, mm-hmm. which is long enough for spoilers, yeah? Mm. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, the star, the, here's the thing. The star as is, we advertise at the beginning, we spoil anything. The, sto- so the Star I, is Born is basically the same story <clears throat> over and over again, except it's just different ways of telling it. Okay? So. Um, and rooted in the time period it's right. set in. Bradley Cooper, um, direct, this is his directorial debut, um, and he plays Jackson Maine. And then um, uh, Lady Gaga, she um, plays, oh my gosh, hold on, my mind's blanking. Um, she plays his love interest that becomes, oh my gosh, you guys. Allie. Thank you, Allie. I can't believe I forgot that, actually. That's my great grandmother's name. So, um, he has got some issues, um, deep-rooted stuff that came from a bad childhood. Um, I love the fact that Sam Elliott was in this movie. And was his brother. And when I came back, I came back missing the 20 minutes. I totally thought that that was his dad. I was really confused. 
And um, yeah, it was very confused. She's like, it's his brother. I'm like, what? Oh, okay. Um, but Bradley Cooper, um, the makeup on Bradley Cooper was perfection. I mean, he looked like a ragged drunk. He had so many like wrinkles and his son, his skin was, looked like, um, been out in the sun way too much. I mean, he just looked ragged and had a hard life. Right. Um, so he meets, I'm going to, um, preface this by giving a little Kendra gave me this. I'm giving you kudos. Don't worry. Um, they had uh, Bradley Cooper had gone to a um, benefit because there were some other people that were going to be in this movie. Beyonce actually was going to be gonna in this movie. The G can read up off on that. That obviously did not work out. Anyway, so he went to a benefit and Lady Gaga was there and she sang Love on Rose. Uh, and when he saw her, he thought, that's Allie. That's got to be her. So then he met her at her house talked to her about the movie. Um, they sang a song um, on the piano, and that was it. So uh, she kind of mentions it uh, in the beginning of her documentary that she has on. What is that on? Is that on Netflix? I can't remember. that I watched part of it. Anyway, so I will say that the music I loved because it was taped live. It wasn't recordings in a studio and then had it laid over. So all that music was live. Um, the band was Willie Nelson's son. Um, and he actually, Chris, Chris Christopherson actually uh, was in, at a concert and they went on first and then he, Bradley Cooper, got to in, introduce Chris Christopherson, which was pretty cool. So they used actual they went to concerts and used those crowds. Well, they also went to the the big um, concert in uh, in Britain. Yeah, uh, and they didn't tell anybody. They just went out there, recorded for five minutes. So the opening, I think it's the opening scene. Yeah, was filmed there. So they're just out there playing music, and he's like, "Nobody can hear you past the first five rows, and you're just hoping the people in the back don't start booing because they can't hear what's going on." That the music was not being pumped through the speakers. It was just them out there and they're recording with the film and getting what they could for five minutes in between sets. That is interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that. <clears throat> um, There's a they... lot of creative things that they did directorial wise with this that I, I, I appreciated. I'm like, he took some original takes and directing that I really enjoyed. The one, yes. There were some takes that um, when he talks about her nose, how much he loves her nose. I, I don't know. That's kind of a thing. Girls have a thing about their nose. So what I've heard about, <clears throat> what I heard about through that part of it is, is that was Lady Gaga, like putting a lot of her true story into to that. Well, Bob the way she was trying to get into the thing, how she, they wouldn't. Yeah. Because she didn't have an image. She had a good voice, but she didn't have an image. Nobody really wanted to sign her and put her to a label. Well, I, Barbara Streisand, everybody gave her hell about her nose too. Mm -hmm. And she never changed it. So it was kind of a nod there, I thought. Um, but that shot, when he puts his finger down her nose, and then he they reverse the camera, and oh God, I love that shot. And then um, I love the way when she's singing her song, they just really focus on him looking at her. Like, I don't know. I just felt the love. I really did. But they, they really did become very close during this movie. And uh, when they're, you know, she starts becoming bigger than he is, well, she be starts becoming big, right? And uh, I think that they're, you know, I was talking to Dustin about it. I, I know the movie was a little longer, but I still feel like we needed 10 minutes or something of character development from Allie being this person that we knew from the beginning to yeah. somebody who said, I'm not changing my hair to the exact next practically next part of the movie. She has orange hair 
and it pissed me off. And she's wearing ridiculous outfits and she's got. And th- that's where I had an issue with the movie. It was like it didn't feel true to who she was as a character in the music that she was writing. I agree. It was like all of a sudden she's doing this music that is very poppy, lady as Gaga slash, you know, you can name like. Britney, fifth, well, the Britney yeah, Spears. Yeah, that kind of music. And I'm just like, well, this wasn't where I thought she would have gone if she would have broken out by herself. That is why he called her ugly and that's what he meant. They have a, a fight. And he called her ugly. And that's when she freaked out and told him to get the hell out. He was drunker than a skunk when he did it. But he was just like, he kept saying, what is the name? You know, what is the song you're singing? What are you doing? Like, what's happening to you? Which agreed. What is she was singing songs that were absolutely ridiculous. (laughs) The thing is, I was telling Kendra that at my age, When you find a connection like that and he is giving you the stage, he gave her the piano, he sat back, he let her do her thing. It's not like he was jealous of it. Every time she sang, he's back there mouthing the words and his eyes are of, he's proud of her and he loves her. They could have gone on tour together. They could have done that. She could have had that. And I feel like that was enough, but no. Here we go, and we have to go on to this whole other thing where she leaves him in a way to go off and do her own thing, and it felt like, I don't know. It was just just weird to me, the direction that they went with her music, because I'm like, even if a producer saw her performing on that stuff, that's not what her music sounded like, so why would have that have said, oh, this is the direction we're going to take it. We're going to take it very poppy. She's on and SNL. Like, Did you? And the song weird. she sings on SNL is <laughs> This Isn't Me or what was it? This Isn't Me. Something about she, my walking because I'm jealous because my boy is walking by. And But This Isn't Me. This Isn't Me. I and, like, she, and, I, and basically the song was kind of being telling. I and know. then he walks out. And... um. Then I'm going to say that there was a part where I felt like Bradley Cooper, who in the hell talked to you about this? <sighs> because I felt like it was extremely, in a way, um, artful, I would say. His scene in the garage, it took him forever to take his hat off. He tapped his hat. We already knew the story of how he tried to hang himself when he was 13, but the um, ceiling fan the broke. ceiling fan broke, and his father didn't even notice, and it was sitting in the room for you know six months or something, and he gets out of the truck because um, he's had a, a horrible time and embarrassed her because she won a Grammy, first of all, and then Dustin hated this because there's no way he would have gotten on stage. They would have had people taking him off stage. Um, He never would have been able to get up there on stage with her. So drunk, completely out of it, and then have that happen, have that scene happen that completely was embarrassing and horrible for her. So, I wonder if that was a little bit of a twist on the Kanye West thing. <laughs> I don't know. Of Kanye West getting up there on stage. Well, maybe. It's possible. And then her and producer. embarrassing and trying to upstage kind of thing. Her, produ- her producer showing up to the house saying, we've just basically been trying to clean up your mess and you single-handedly almost take out her career. And then he's talking about that she's going to go to Europe. But then she says no because he can't go. And then when he realizes that she's giving up all this stuff for him, I just – so where do you put this film? I want to just say this real quick. What I want to say is we know what he's going to do. He has the belt in his hand. He goes through. We have the garage scene. He pulls the thing down. That's all we needed right there. We did not need the scene of going back and looking at the garage and seeing him through the windows. That pissed me off. Because I felt like it was a gut punch. It was just one of those shock moments. And I didn't think we needed it. I felt like we had enough. And you could have. 
I don't know. It was just really tacky. So that's where I was. I would say that Bradley Cooper failed in the movie was that scene. Uh, the dog was actually his, by the way, his dog. The dog got a really good looking steak. Yeah. Um, I obviously love the movie. I love the music. I, I kind of, I, I do have a, an issue ever since I was little, but I think it's because I love movies so much. I really love Jackson Maine. That's the character. I don't really, Bradley Cooper, hmm, Bradley Cooper movies, there's tons of them I don't like. I'm not a huge Bradley Cooper person at all. At all, actually. Even when he plays a fuzzy rocket raccoon? I just, no, I just don't really okay. like and he, I there's barely any movies I like of his, and there's some I hate. So seeing him in this movie, and his he was so kind and sweet, and I struggle and the, the struggling with this disease, and she didn't help him. I mean, she comes in and says, "I'm not going to find you again. I'm not going to come looking for you again." When he goes off on a bender and she, he doesn't show up where he's supposed to be, it's like. She says earlier in the movie, kind of making a reference to her father and him being a drunk. There's no, like, throughout the whole thing, there's nothing that points to her father being a drunk at all. She just says, you know, Dad. Yeah. Maybe, maybe her father, maybe her mother was. Her father, the guy who played her father was a comedian. I forgot what his name is. It was Andrew Dice Clay. Andrew Dice Clay. And I I, like, freaked it was like, out. I was about third through the movie. I'm like. Wait a minute. I know him. I did not. And every know time him. I've ever heard him, he's like got a huge filthy mouth and like you know exactly who he is when he's speaking that way. When but I saw like, the credits, I was like, Oh my god. Yeah. No, but um I think maybe it was her mother. You know, you know dad about dealing with drunks. Because she said he dad, he's a drunk. But she doesn't handle him like a drunk. She doesn't hand I mean, she doesn't I don't know. I feel like when you have that connection, you just don't go off. And so to me, yeah, um, my friend Rhonda said she just didn't love him as much as he loved her. She wanted her own thing. She went for her own. And to me, uh, at this point in my life, um, I can, I don't know how old she was in the movie, I guess. But uh, I feel like when you make a connection like that and you could help him through it, and you can write music together and be on stage together and have that life together. I'm sorry, I'm doing a whole, you know, Paul and Linda thing. Stick with it. And so that was disappointing. I know the movie was going to go there and that's where I had to go. But to, to me, just stick with the love. But I would, I, I'd, I'd go see it. You Dustin. have seen it. <laughs> I would say I'm telling other people I would go see it. I mean, Dustin really just liked it, but didn't love it. He said, you fall in love with characters. That's kind of what you do. And I did. But I also liked Lady Gaga's character because she was so stripped down until the end, of course. Um, I, I liked the first third of the movie. I am um, To be honest. The first third? Yeah. So when, when she was very raw and he was you know, trying to like make her see Mm -hmm. who she actually was. I thought as a whole, I thought it was a very, very fine directorial work. I did too. Um, He had some good shots. I don't know if that's up to him, but yeah, I, I, that's the question is I have is how much input did he actually have as director or did he have, was he underneath the wings of others that, Really just did. He learned Matt how to play the guitar. He had help. Yeah. So Matt was his photographer. I mean, he learned how to play the guitar pretty damn well. He learned <clears> how <throat> to sing and he learned how to drop his his voice. Sounded like Sam Elliott. It was I, I amazing. Loved every every shot when they went to the concert stuff, I loved. I loved the way it was filmed. Me too. I'm just like the and the one where she finally decides to join him. Yes. The back and forth between him just Busting out on the guitar and then cutting to like the beats of going back to her and what she's doing and to finally to the point when they finally see each other on the stage. And it was like, Ugh. damn. <laughs> I have chills. Um, I'm sorry. I'm ridiculous. So, but I, uh, my girls, of course, know the music and they sing, <laughs> of course, 
they've seen the clips and they, can we see it? Can we? And he's always begging me to see it. I'm sorry, you can't see it. You're, I'm not taking you to see it. So, uh, but of course they love the music. So we listened, to, we, we listened to the music on the way to school every day. So I would say go. I'm sorry I've taken so long about this movie, but um, I think Jason doesn't want to see it because I have a crush on him. The main character. Brad yeah. or Maine. Jackson Maine. Okay. I think he's just kind of like, ugh. Yeah. I don't want to deal with this. I think that's kind of what it is. So, And can I say every time I see Sam Elliott, I love. I him. like get like a... I love him. It's almost like a heart palpitation. It's like... <sighs> can I just say this that? This movie just goes up like a notch. If that it was man, like an eight, it goes up to an 8.5. That man can act. Like yeah. his, his eyes... He's got soul, and he God, he also looks completely ageless. He looks the same age that I think I saw him like in one of my first movies in the early nineties. I'm like he hasn't aged in thirty the years. The man is sexy beyond you. It's just and his voice. I mean, his can, voice is insane. And when he t- says it was you that I idolize, not dad, and he shuts the door. I mean, he didn't have a face, and then he turns to look behind him. To, to pull out and the his eyes have are already tear rimmed red. I just thought, God, that man can act. I mean, he's just fantastic in this movie. So Sam Elliott, we love you. Keep on keeping on. Uh, side note, real quick, Matthew Labatique is the cinematographer for the film, so that kind of explains a lot to me. I don't know. Matt, uh, I first saw Matt's work in Rick and for a Dream. That's Darren's film. He also did Black Swan with him and oh. a couple other things. He's known for doing music videos and okay. he's a good cinematographer. He has eyes. But good. Side note, finish. Cool. Uh, I went and saw a bunch of stuff over the last couple of weeks. Um, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, the one I'm picking out, though, is one that I was excited about, which was Bad Times at the El Royale. Um, this is Drew Goddard's film. Um, if you're not familiar with Drew, Drew did uh, Cabin in the Woods. He directed with that with uh joss whedon who wrote that um but he's also behind the daredevil netflix series he's behind a lot of the buffy stories a lot of the lost stories um he's been around a time or two and he also had helped in um getting deadpool out there so when this was announced i was excited to see his name on there but not only that they assembled a cast of you know you had jeff daniels john hamm uh, Dakota Johnson. Uh, what's that? Is that Tim Blake Nelson in the film or is that? No, some? Tim Blake Nelson's not in it. Um, Chris, uh, Hemsworth as a complete psychopath. Um, and there's something about seeing Chris Hemsworth play so against character of everything else that he does that it's just enjoyable. Um, so I want to start out by saying they totally ruined this movie by showing the, too much in the trailers. Um, I wish that they didn't show that the hotel had secret rooms and that they were being, that you could actually see inside of what was happening with every room um, and just left that a little bit more of a mystery. It would have been more of an impact in the film. Um, I thought it was very stylized. It was a beautiful piece of film work. Um, Jeff Daniels acting was among the best I've seen him do. It's very spot on. Um, John Hamm was entertaining as you come to find out that he's a undercover FBI guy that's FBI, CIA, one of the two. I can't remember right at this point right now. Um, my biggest takeaway was that I wasn't as satisfied from the film at the end as I thought it was going to be. Oh, also had Cynthia Revio in this. So if you're not familiar with her, she was in Color Purple. Um, oh. Big standout voice and so she had some singing in this which was really cool and the way they did that was pretty fun um but they set up the whole thing that i was thinking that the ending was going to happen and there was going to be one more little nugget dropped and it didn't and it just ended the way it ended um i don't know how to explain that without going into the detail of the movie other than the guy who plays the basically the doorman, the bellboy runner of the joint, um, 
his background is that he uh, was a, a sniper during the the war, and so he, he has a scene where he says he like he killed 140 people. Um, as the film's coming to a close, and Jeff Daniels, the opening scene is Jeff Daniels' brother getting shot at the hotel. And I was kind of hoping that they would have dropped the one little nugget and revealed to Jeff Daniels that he actually was responsible for his brother's death as well. But they never did. And I was thought that would have been an interesting way to end the film and give a little bit more of a, oh, and then the kid dies. Dustin went to see it. He, also, he went to see both Stars Born in this movie, and he really liked this movie that you yeah. this one. I, th- I thought it had the upside of being really good. It was about 20 minutes too long. I think it was two hours and 20 minutes. So it was really long for a a film that didn't have much to say. But um gives me hope for Drew Goddard as hopefully he's going to take on more directing responsibilities outside of just X-Force. Um, but he wrote, directed, and produced this, which is pretty awesome to have like one person being doing all the things because it doesn't happen as much anymore. And to assemble that kind of cast, um, I said the highlight of this was probably uh, Hemsworth just being completely off the walls, bonker, cult, religious type dude who just uh, brings it to a final close at the end. So I would say see it when it comes out um, on rent. Uh, Really? Don't rush to go see it in the theater. What if you haven't seen the trailer? If you haven't seen the trailer, you'll probably get a little bit more enjoyment out of it. I haven't seen the trailer. Uh, go see it. Um, <laughs> I just don't think it's going to be sticking around in theaters very long. An hour that we're t- two weeks since release, I think. Three weeks since release. So it doesn't feel like it's going to be a movie that's going to stick around very long. Yeah, that's Tony. Funny. Okay, so we're talking about horror films and that kind of thing. And I thought I'd go back to one of the original horror films I saw as a kid. Um uh, see, The Omen is a supernatural horror film. I used to watch it with my dad a lot. Sorry, I'm having a sneeze. Gone. So, um, mm-hmm. The Omen is basically the story of a, a British, a diplomat to Britain who adopts or kind of swindles a kid into his wife's arms after his son dies. Um, and he doesn't tell his wife that he switched the babies. And he brings home basically the Antichrist or a baby who as he grows older, it causes more chaos and mayhem around the family. And, uh, spoiler alert, he causes a lot of deaths, and his nanny does, and there's a lot of creepy things. And the only, one thing I can say, I'm going to represent really quickly, because yeah, I can. You guys should have seen it. It came out in 1970, let's see here, I think, 76. Yeah, so if you haven't seen so it now, I'm should, sorry, sorry, spoilers are just, yeah. it's gone. But it's a very, I mean, I guess with this film, the thing that sticks out the most for me was the music. It was very repetitive, very... Mm-hmm. ingrained in you so it's like Jaws I can hear the music and still get you know, creeped out by certain things about it it's not scary creepy just like ah Damien um, the dog the rock baller was creepy for me as a kid um, it didn't put me off from dogs it's just that dog the growl and the protection element of it and the nanny was just creepy as all get out it was just her face her expressions her eyes I guess her eyes um, if you haven't seen the film I think you should go see it it's not it wouldn't be scary it doesn't really age well I don't think, but it's still entertaining for me to watch. And I haven't seen anything in like 20 years. So seeing it again the other day was kind of brought back memories of watching with my dad and him introducing me to supernatural or with, I guess, music that ties into it. I mean, I guess the music in the film and the cinematography was kind of basic for me, but the music and the visuals matched in a certain way. Like even the zoo scene was creepy and the music helped um, make it that way. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you haven't seen The Omen, not two and three, just The Omen, the original. You should see it. Um, yeah. That's my piece on that, I guess. Thank Fun. You. Omen is a good lead off. Omen. Omen Joys. I, I didn't say Omen. It's just a joke. I Omen Joys. <laughs> Omen Joys. Omen is a good, I think it's a good lead off. It is. To, or a jumping off point. Or do we need to take a break we can talk about our audible reads later you sure yeah we're not getting paid right now so 
I don't care. Okay. <laughs> Nobody's gone and clicked any of the links, so. I think you can get. So, I think I have one. What? I think I have somebody that's going to do that. Oh, all right. Um, so um, I was saying, <laughs> I might have person. to cut that part out. Even yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe we love Audible. Um, so we are talking about horror movies. Um, now there are people that aren't horror movie people. Me. And that's fine. I, I totally get it. Like you know, I. Why the hell? Why'd you go? You know, and I started. I'll preface this by saying I like a good horror movie. I just haven't found one. See, that's what I've been trying to say. He said it's so much quicker and easier than I could. That's okay. There's some movies that that make me jump, yeah. and I like to jump. There's a movie. And there's a couple of movies that were surprises, um, like Housebound. Housebound. Uh, I don't know when we watched that movie was not something that I was expecting to be. I don't know. I just, we were like, okay, well, it looks good. It's about a chick who, um, gets into some trouble. And so she has, uh, she's on house arrest basically and goes home to her house, uh, her childhood home. Her mother is a little loony. I, I, she sees her as a little loony. And she says there are people in the house and she can hear them. And it moves on to she can start hearing things. And it just goes on from there. I'm not going to spoil this movie. I'm just not going to. Um, But if you like horror movies and thrillers, this is not a slasher. So I'm not a slasher person. That's why I didn't like, I never watched the Friday the 13th. I felt like you've seen one, you've seen them all. Um, but this movie I thought was great. Um, I, my first horror movie, I remember seeing my first one. This is terrible, terrible story. Okay, so my sister said she was 12. Is that right? Um, I can't be right. Anyway, but I am five years younger than my, than Wendy. She's been on the show. And let's see here. Let's just get it. Oh, I haven't found one. She saw it. Maybe she was, she had it been older than 12. Anyway, she's watching it. Um, the parents have no idea what we're doing. And we're in there watching a horror movie. I know that um, my little sister was not there. I think she was visiting her dad. And they watched Nightmare on Elm Street. That was your first? That was my first horror movie was Nightmare on Elm Street. One, two. Because I don't think that (laughs) gremlins and ghoulies and all that stuff was horror to me. It was Mm -hmm. just goofy. Um, (laughs) But Nightmare on Elm Street, I was so terrified. And my sister has no recollection of this happening. It did happen. So my little, so we sleep in Mandy's bed when we were at my dad's house. And Mandy's bed was a single and Wendy does not like to be touched at all when she's sleeping. She's one of those people. And so she, I was so scared out of my mind. Can I sleep with you? That's fine. Just don't touch me. And I remember sleeping on my side, barely sleeping at all, trying not to move into her because I th- thought she would throw me out of the bed. Just like <laughs> the entire wow. night, just sleeping on my side, t- so terrified. That movie scared me so much that honestly this is ridiculous that um i think in chicago somebody dressed up like F- freddy uh at a horror like one of those little scary houses that you have to go through or whatever and it was a really it was really good mm-hmm. it, i was terrified i know this man's not real i know that but i was still scared i mean i he scares me he's a scary guy and it's so brilliant that he comes when you sleep, when you go to sleep. Don't close your eyes. It's just fantastic. I love that. And Johnny Depp, you know, he gets sucked into a bed and just blood just bursting out of it. Oh, my God. Anyway, and the, that that scene, the visual of his arms coming out and getting longer and longer, going down that alley and then scraping the outside i mean that's fantastic 
That's true. for me. Um, I think I've mentioned this before, like how horror films they. I've I've never had like a jump out of the seat type moment. I usually laugh or giggle um, because I find a lot of it just absurd. What sticks with me, and that's why some of the ones that I put on here is just more of like certain things that like tie into like mm, everyday life or modern living of like how my mind will recall certain things. So like the ring, the static of the TV, and like something coming. Oh through my it. gosh, I was terrified. Um, you got poltergeist. Just a simple thing like the braces scene. Oh wait, okay. I'm sorry. You know, I'll like, take yeah. that back. Poltergeist was the first one. Poltergeist, I think, might have been my first. That was my first because I remember the like Carrie, Carrie. I remember the face and, falling off. Um, Ugh. but it was just like like little things. Like my dad would drink tequila, and I'd always check his bottle. Like, Ugh. is there a worm in the bottle of tequila? <laughs> like little things that just stuck. That in wasn't my head. In the first one, huh? That, that was, was in the second one. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like you talk about like uh, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, the scraping, oh, yeah. like. Anytime, like, somebody would be, like, scrape the nails on a chalkboard, I would instantly go back to the nails going down the street. No, my sister is a, is a good person, sweet person, Wendy, good person. <laughs> but as a child, but <laughs> what an asshole. I mean, during, after I, we watched Poltergeist, she would make her face look like the clown and follow me around and, be, <laughs> and just do the clown face. And I thought... And be terrifying. She probably doesn't even remember doing it. You did it. Anyway, yeah, that was terrifying. So she would pretend to be the clown. I was always f- afraid of the tree because I t- had trees near my window, I think. I just The tree was terrifying. I, I thought that movie is terrifying. Um, the ring scared the complete crap out of me. I uh, still apologize to this day to, uh, at the time, it was Lisa Argett Singer and Alice Corley. But she hated horror movies, and I was an I was an asshole. I was, I just was. We were going to a huge group. I thought it'd be fun for her. She doesn't watch horror movies. She just doesn't do it. Um, and I told her it wasn't a horror movie. Wow, Valerie, what an asshole! I mean, wow. I'm a friend. <laughs> this girl. I will never and unfortunately, forget. this was before you can like pull up your phone and check a trailer. <laughs> I know. We didn't have cell phones. Yeah. And we go to see this movie, and I'm sitting next to her, this poor girl. She turned completely around and was facing the opposite direction and had her fingers in her ears for practically half of the movie, <laughs> cursing me yeah. out. Because she couldn't leave because I we had a car. I mean, we were all in the car. And I was, that was scary. That movie was scary. Why would you ever do that? I don't know. Because I'm mean, and I thought it'd be funny. I don't know, because I was screwed up in college, and I did mean things. I guess I didn't. I didn't mean it to be mean to her. She was a sweet person. I just thought, come on, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Maybe she'll have fun. No, nope, mm-hmm. it was not fun for her. Um, the Exorcist, of course, that ruined. I'm ruining my my friends. That ruined peas for me. Jeez, <laughs> oh, um, poor Jeremy Dewey. But we still don't have. Out yet. It's coming. I just haven't had time. Dude, it's, it's okay. Well, you will learn, Jeremy. Uh, my friend Dewey, uh, he remembers going to my house and watching The Exorcist. <laughs> and I, I destroyed him. I destroyed that boy. Mm. Like, he was so terrified. I had no idea till till years later that watching that movie completely screwed him up and he could not watch <laughs> horror movies ever again, like ever after after that. And he was done with horror movies. And I thought, wow, I'm really awesome because I, yeah, I also made people watch the documentary first and then watch the movie and the documentary. Uh, I thought it was fascinating. Um, some of the things that are kind of interesting – the director was a dick. I'm not going to. Th- yeah. And he had that harness when she goes, when she's flipping back and forth in the bed, he has a harness on her, except one of the, uh, it got loose in the back. So when she was moving forward, it started moving her back and she was basically getting whiplash. whiplash. And this girl, 
was screaming and in the movie she's screaming please make it stop make it stop it's stinging it's hurting that's actually real he keeps all that stuff in the movie there's a part where ellen burston's going into her room and um she this is about a girl who gets possessed by the devil basically or the demon but it says the demon Zazu, says, Zazu? Zazu 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 um and I just figure I didn't have to explain this film but I guess I do I, all at once she's just why did something's because her dad how did she get it she her oh, it was an architectural thing that dig that he brought back an amulet and then she got attached to the amulet and the demon yeah when did her so um she started reagan um played by linda blair um yeah she starts uh things start flying around in the room and the director just said i'm not going to tell her i'm not going to tell ellen burston anything about this this scene so when she goes in and there are things flying at her and she's protecting herself. I think they, I think there's a chair or a desk or something that actually hits her or whatever. Um, the face, the faces that she has and saying, the words that she's using are all just what she was saying at the time because she had no idea that this was going to happen. Um, the breath, they, the breath that they had, she, um, her breath starts showing like it's cold in the room. And they refrigerated the room. The room was ridiculously cold. Um, so that's how they did it. They re- refrigerated the entire room. Now you can go online and find out all these fun little facts about people that died on the set. And um, there is no there is no possible way that he could have been thrown out the window and fallen down those steps. I... <laughs> We were in Washington. I told Jason, I have to go to these steps. Fine. I have to get a picture taken. So I know this is sick and twisted. I made Zoe get her picture taken on the steps. And then I said, later, you'll appreciate it. I said, I'm not going to tell you why, but you'll appreciate it later in life. But um, the part, I mean, this movie came with barf bags. I mean, they were giving barf bags out to people. Um and it used words that, I mean, do we really go with some of the words it used? I mean, I some of the words that I had never heard used in a movie before. I mean, they used the C word, which was pretty big. Mm-hmm. And then they had her, this girl, <clears throat> masturbating with a crucifix, which basically she had a box um, that had a sponge with Carol syrup dyed red in between her legs. She had no idea what she was doing. She had no clue what masturbating was. And she has to say, let Jesus fuck you. Like, just you dra- jamming this thing in between her legs. I think that could have been a different actress that did that. Because um, she had a double. But they, she, they were describing how they did all these things. And it's just unbelievable, the d- documentary behind this movie. Uh, they have these scenes where it's just these black and white images. It's terrifying. I find it terrifying. Do you, did you find it? You don't find it scary? No. Okay. <laughs> I still, I mean, I can go to sleep. I'm fine. I just appreciate it, I guess. I appreciate it. Um, it's taken from a book uh, that's based on a boy, actually, who gets who has an exorcist come in, and they they do this whole exorcism, and so it's written and about adapted from that. It's adapted from a true story. <clears throat> um, but yeah, that's that would be my top choice. And then if I went down the list of things. What do you look for in a horror movie? Last night we watched Veronica. And it wasn't as scary to me because they kept moving the, the camera 
into a fr- into the room and then the girls would walk into the room. I like the camera to be behind the person. Um, I like the camera to almost be as part, like you the are. first person the, view. The first person view. And so you have no idea what's going to be jumping out at you. Um, so camera work, I think, is what makes the movie scary for me. The music, it, you know, it, it works. I think it happens, you know, I mean, everybody knows the Jaws theme. Jaws, Jaws didn't scare me. A lot of people used Jaws as their scary movie on, uh, when I put it on um, Facebook and people answering um, what movies scared them the most. A lot of people wrote Friday the I was going to reply and, and see, like, when did they watch it? Like, how old were they? Right. You know, how, you know, in as close, closer you get to when it was released, I think the scarier it is because you just you know, have, you don't have anything to like really compare it to. My sister watched Jaws and then she couldn't take a bath yeah. forever. She had to take showers. And, um, yeah, Crystal, right. She has a nightmare on Elm Street and Children of the Corn. Yeeks. Um, there's another Friday the 13th, right? Rebecca and Lisa obviously call, said the ring. <laughs> Sorry. The Exorcist and the Shining. And then we have um, one of our lone, I think our lone guy, right? Sebastian, who says Jaws, the ring, and it follows. Which, have you seen those? I've seen them. I think I've seen it follows. It's been a while. Um, I actually, Stacy. <clears throat> Wrote Damien Omen 2 and Rabid. I've never heard of Rabid. Never heard of Rabid. Mm-hmm. So that was interesting. So I thought, and, and Scream, um, Strangers, Strangers scared the crap out of me. Megan wrote that, and I can see why she would think The Lovely Bones is scary. Lovely so, Bones? Yeah. It's it's kind of her. Okay. It's I think it just depends on what you're terrified of. You know? I think, yeah, Brigitte, right here. Poltergeist, the tree, the clown. Let's see, uh, she was eleven years old. She tells you how old she is. Um, Chucky didn't make me scared. Uh, Brenda Brooks said, like Friday Thirteenth again. Lots of Friday the Thirteenth. I think they were all young. And then Mary Lou Wiles is uh, my aunt, and she wrote Valley of the Dolls, which I have not seen. Hmm. Which is very interesting that. Um, but I was asking people what their scariest movies were online. So I promised that I would put them up on the podcast, but there's some good answers there and lots of Friday the 13th. Interesting. I I can go into a different, uh, way with that. Um, you're talking about things that stick to you. Mm -hmm. Um, so I remember growing up watching, uh, tales from dark side, the movie. Oh, yeah. With my dad a lot. And the one thing that sticks out to me the most was the gargoyle story. Like, the mummy story was there, and it made me laugh because Pissimi's a funny guy. But it meant to be funny. But the uh, gargoyle sequence with the woman who killed the guy's friend and then told him in her monster form, don't repeat this story, don't repeat what you've seen here tonight. And then a couple minutes later, that she meets him, and they fall in love and whatnot. And then many years later, he's still plagued by the sight of that beast and he's actually created a you know a sculpture of that beast he's an artist and then they have kids though but then he just can't hold it anymore and he tells her one night a long time ago i encountered this monster and she gets really sad and lets out a scream and then reveals that she is the monster and the kids become gargoyles like her and then they go to a building and perch and become stone but that's the one thing that stands out to me the most and tells from dark side was like a anthology horror comedy kind of thing it's kind of a wrap around the stories were there's a boy who was captured by a witch who was going to eat him. Was that before the series or after? I think it was after. So, because the, there's a series on HBO, but that was the one that's something that sticks to me the gargoyle story that's still seeing her burst out of her skin and become a gargoyle and kill him. How old were you? The kids, probably like eight or seven or eight, probably. I know. I, mean, I my. Um, it didn't creep me out. It was like, oh, she's becoming a monster. Wow. Okay. Oh, I think a lot of us watched scary movies way too young. 
Like I mean, really way too young. I always saw a horror comedy. I never saw a straight horror film as I was older, but my dad always showed me like Gremlins was a horror comedy. So um, The Omen wasn't really ha 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 funny, but my dad said you should watch this. So um, I uh, like, don't become this kid. Don't be a brat. But um, just, I don't know. The Conjuring and um, Emily Rose. It's those. It's the the demon coming into the body. It's like the Exorcist. It's you the know, possession. The possession. Mm-hmm. Kendra and I were talking about possessions scare the crap out of us. That's mm-hmm. scary to us. Uh, things that happen in mental awards. Uh, Things like that scare me. We're, we're scared of You should visit Naz during Halloween. We have a scary fun house we do in Madai, um, the Madai uh, residence, where the story of, I forget what it's called, just a play based on it, but there's a nun who got pregnant by a priest and she didn't have the baby, and the baby is supposed to, and her is supposed to haunt Madai residence because that really happened there. It's a play. What's it called? It's like, it's not really great. What is it? Is it a play or we walk through something? It was a, it was a play, but it's based on things that happened at NAS. Like there was a nun who was on campus who had a baby from a priest. I think I could go. I think Kendra's pretty tied up. It's at night. It's just blah, blah, blah. blah. She's basically done. She's doing the Rocky Horror Show, so she's pretty much. But yeah, I'm doing days. Halloween alone, I think, because Jason's going to be gone. Courtney, or Kendra's going to be gone. Jeez. For me, I, I like things that kind of like and they they tend to be more towards thriller side mm-hmm. things that are where you start ending up with like psychological breaks so you don't mm-hmm. you can't really like is that really happening or is that just in their mind and the stuff that you don't see you know those are the things that will mm-hmm. draw me into a movie more than like oh the scary Mark. scary guy like now I look at like Freddy Krueger and it's just like I really know. dude I know have you seen the do you do you watch? I assume you watch foreign films. You know, it depends on what they are and if they subject interests me. Mm. I don't watch a lot. The orphanage but. is good. Have you seen the orphanage? Bits and pieces. Okay, I like the orphanage. Uh, the movie we watched last night, Veronica, was actually also in in Spanish. Spanish, yeah. Uh, Spain, uh, Spanish, Spain, Spain really knows that. Put out some great movies. With Del Toro. Uh, yeah. Um, so. Veronica was in Spanish, and it, it wasn't filmed right. That's why I kept saying, "God, I'm just." If it was behind her shoulder or things like that, would have been somebody actually. I'm sorry, I don't remember who it was. I could look, but um, they were talking about. Oh no, actually, it was Kendra talking about mm, the movie with Mel Gibson. The movie with Mel Gibson. Oh no, it's my friend Leslie, um, where he is a fa- he is a, pr- a preacher and signs. Signs. Yeah, she thought signs was scary and Cabin in the Woods. I think. Yeah, that's Drew Goddard and, and she, Chris Hemsworth. That was scared. That scared her. Uh, I think um, there are movies that are thriller movies. There are movies that aren't that scary, but they're great because they're Hitch- Hitchcocky and I think I like the Hitchcock feel to it like uh, uh, the movie with Michelle Pfeiffer and she's, and Harrison Ford. What Lies Beneath. That's a really good thriller film. It didn't scare yeah. me, but I liked it. It was really suspenseful. It's really great film to Slow watch. Burn. I don't know. It's really fun. Um, there's a lot of movies that aren't that I mean, um, Funny Games is just bizarre because he they're just completely terrorizing this family and it could actually happen. It looks like it actually happened. And that is why The Strangers with Scott Speedman and Liv Tyler. Jason and I were in New York City when we saw this. We went, and we were in uh, Times Square and we went into a movie theater and the screen was so massive. It was practically IMAX, and we were maybe we weren't very, there weren't very people people in there, and I remember shaking like I just was I shook during this movie. It was larger than life, and um, 
my sister says the reason it scares her is they said, why did you do this to us? Well, you know, why, why us? Because, because you answered the door. Because you said, because you let us in. Yep. There was no reason. <laughs> I mean, it was to have that and there'd be no reason. And it's just a random thing. That's scary as hell. Mm-hmm. And just, that's why every night we always, we're big on, you lock the door, you chain the door. You don't let anybody in. It doesn't matter. Like, yeah, we're big on. And a lot of things happen because people leave the doors open. People, lock your doors at night. I don't care if you're in a small town and you know everybody. Lock your doors at night. I'm not saying something scary is going to happen. I'm just saying that it could. But yeah, I don't know. I We like to be scared. They say that slasher films. Now this is just, this came from... I actually documented it because I knew that somebody would ask me, probably the person to my left, uh, from Dr. Deidre. And it was a 1995 issue of the human condition. Um, And why do we watch these films? So slasher films, sorry, people, paper person. Because deep down inside, we like it. Gore watchers are typically low empathy. Thriller watchers, higher empathy. And then uh, I find that to be interesting that people that are just (laughs) gore and you're just watching people get slashed to bits and like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I refuse to watch. Hmm. Have you seen it? Mm -hmm. It's just, it just looks awful. Yeah. But Amityville, scary houses that are scary. I love those ghosts. I love ghosts. I love all that stuff. But that's, we all, we we love Halloween. So this, yeah. Halloween. I'm practically, I feel like I've been talking the entire time. You're entertaining. Oh. And you like this, so. I know. I'm very excited about, I, I, I just, yeah. I have The Conjuring. Are you going to go see the... Oh, no, you're not going to go see the Halloween because it's a slasher film. Mm. Mm, I just don't know. I, I haven't made the decision yet. Um, I really want to see Session 9. It's here. It's, fa- it's, it's also in a mental hospital, but it was... I think DirecTV own, is not letting it go, so we can't watch it. Uh, but The Conjuring, I recommend... And the orphanage argument, it's, it's, but the orphanage is, you know, it's a foreign film you're going to have to read. Um, Sinister with Ethan Hawke. Damn, that scared the shit out of me. Um, again, I just, let's see here. I want to say Housebound will kind of get you. And then I think everybody who is into horror movies and you haven't seen The Exorcist, it's kind of like a sentencing cane for film students. I mean, if the, you know, we always had to watch sentencing cane, but I think you have to watch The Exorcist. It's a good jumping up. Go for it. Watch The Exorcist what? and never eat cream of bean, cream peas? No, pea cream? it was pea soup. Pea oh. soup. Never eat pea soup again. But they use things, you see things in that movie that they had never done before. People had never seen before. People were terrified of running out of that movie. I, just, I know this because of my parents, but um, pretty damn awesome, I think, to have it be that Reminds scary. me of the story of when Psycho came out, All because that was like the first, that was the first inkling of horror on film. That came out to a mass market, and there was a big. uh, One thing about Hitchcock, he takes his time. Absolutely, that's what I love. Man, the first part of Psycho, I'm like, uh uh I mean, I think Scream kind of. He is the complete opposite of what you would expect out of a horror film. Yeah, because most horror films are, boom, boom. You know, it's that very a little slow and then a ramp up, build it up to a... scary. I would not recommend 
the frame by frame psycho. Yeah, we, <laughs> we we've talked about that one with what's his bucket? John Favreau. No, no, John tall, Favreau. tall guy. That's funny. Vincent Vaughn. Thank you, Vince Vaughn. Um, don't watch that. But I actually saw the actual psycho house on a Universal tour, and they have it up on a hill. It's right there. It's you see it. It's just weird. Anyway, but yeah, I think um, that's a good movie. I don't think The Birds is scary. I just, I don't know. I don't think The Birds is scary. But that's just me. Um, Alfred Hitchcock and Twilight Zone have some really great, if you like that creepy kind of thriller, weird, and you want (laughs) to, I think I grew up on that stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of why I probably like that. But, I mean, they're good stuff to watch. There's some good stuff in there. In fact, The Twilight Zone, the movie, um, had some horrible thing happen. The, 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 they had beheadings, actually, when they did the helicopter scene. The helicopter scene that took off the three. That's sad. Yeah. That was sad. Um, John Lithgow. John Lithgow is actually in the New Pet Cemetery. Did you see that? The John, what? John Lithgow. He's in the New Pet Cemetery. Yeah. Yeah. And he's in the Twilight Zone. He's, he's from here. John Lithgow is? I yeah. thought I said that. He's yeah. from Rochester? Yeah, he's originally from Rochester. I didn't know that. Yeah. He was actually here last year making a film. Him and Blythe Danner. Yes. The look on her face right now. I thought she knew all that. I thought, did I yeah. mention this? Like in the summer when this was like, yeah, my friend Peter Doyle was in a stand-in. Yeah. What movie? Does have a name officially yet? Yeah, they weren't allowed to release the name when they were filming it here. There's some weird, but yeah. I love him. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Who so, else uh, is from here that I don't know? Tay Diggs. I know that. Because um, my friend, you know Brigitte that was here? She went to school with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, Foster. Philip. Seymour. Hoffman. Hoffman. Um, I, knew, I met his babysitter, actually. I knew her. Gordy's from here. Gordy's a wannabe. There's a bunch of people that are from around in the or area. They've, or the they way. have actually performed on the stage at Jiva, mm-hmm. like Josh Berlin. What's his name? Michael Park is from here. He was on Blackfire stage a couple of times, yeah. JCC. He's, yeah, Michael Park. He's from Dear Evan Hansen. No, that's Cody. cool. Yeah, he's, he uh, headlined a couple shows too on Broadway. Darnell and Chapman. He was in Smokey Joe's and um, what's the other one? Violet. John Bolton's from here. Yeah. We got a couple Kristen people. Wig. This, we are a good theater town. We are. We know this. Mimi Kennedy. So, well, I think that wraps up our. Yeah, it does. Spooky stew. I don't think it was that spooky, but maybe you had some <laughs> ideas to go watch. Oh, I forgot. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I so saw- if you're if you're looking for some good movies to see during this Halloween season, there's a couple for you. I forgot one. <laughs> the Babadook. The Babadook actually scared me so much that well, one I had to leave the room for 15 minutes. And then come back because I thought I was, it would too bother. It bothered me so much, and Baba Duke actually scares me so much. I I I won't watch that movie again. There's movies I'll watch again. No, not the Baba Duke. Have you seen it? No, I don't even heard of it. The Baba Duke is, uh, I think, one of the reasons why they think it's scary is because the mother. Which is supposed to be the nurturing. A lot of it's, you know, guys. If we're talking about Jack Nicholson, we're talking about, you know, these people that become, it's the mom, which is like not normal. <laughs> um, but the Babadook is terrifying. Do you want to see a terrifying movie? You didn't think it was about, you didn't? No. Okay. Whatever. Uh, it's terrifying. So, yeah, I think it's a mental fuck, basically. Sorry. The F word. All right. So, uh, there we go. I'm next done. show topic and next show media. I'm going to use 
films based on historical music legends. Mm, and good. the media, Bohemian Rhapsody. So if you have a chance to see it. Because sure it comes out November 2nd, and our show is November 4th. I should be able to get there, hopefully. So that's what our goal is. And there's been enough stuff in recent history. Is that history. what you want the media to be? Mm. That would be the preferred media. It would be to be Bohemian Rhapsody. But we can talk about uh, films based on musical legends. For example, the upcoming Rocky. Elton John docu- uh, Elton John film with Taron Edgerton. Rocket Man. Rocket Man. How does that look to you? Interesting. But okay. that's actually Taron singing, so that's going to be really interesting. Okay. So... Yeah. Taron Edgerton. Oh, yes. The same one who's in Robin Hood. And he's the guy that's going to be... from Kingsman. Isn't he the guy that's going to be on uh, uh, doing Moulin Rouge? Mm. Is that... Or a different guy? Different guy. Different guy. I'm sorry. Kendra's going to kill me. On stage? Yeah. No, that's uh, the one from Greece, I think, wasn't it? I get the guy that's confused. Yeah. Sorry. It's all good. Got them confused. So let's reach into our grab bag. Anything in the kids' corner? Not a thing. Anything in the score of the week? Not yet. Not a thing. Anything in the book of the week? Um, I, no. Well, I have been listening to a book. Does that count? Yeah, we can talk about the books. Okay. Um, so I finished up. I liked, let's see here. I liked my life by, um, gosh, I'm going to screw up her name. Abby Fabiacci and uh, Susan Bennett, Dan Bittner, and um, Therese Plummer were the um, narrators for this book. Uh, very interesting points of view and very interesting take on, hmm, how do I put this? A mother who kills herself and she's looking down hmm I'll have to put it that way a mother who kill, uh, kills herself and she kind of watches over and sees what happens and she's trying to manipulate some people uh, and trying to get them to understand each other um, and then there's a twist at the end I'll say that uh, Gone to Dust I, wa- I actually listened to that it's by Matt Goldman um, read by McLeod Andrews, and I listened to it because the whole thing takes place in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I just thought it would be fun to listen to the whole thing. I mean, he lists so many streets and everything. So if you, yeah, know Minneapolis very well, I mean, you're, he, it's kind of cool. And right now, I'm really loving "In Pieces" by Sally Field, read by Sally Field. It is her memoir. It's. So far, phenomenal. I really love it. I really do. She talks a lot about, she hold, She doesn't hold back about um, anything. I mean, I, it's a very human book. It's a, it's not like a very, she gets into it like Jane Fonda does in her book. I like, I like the ones that really get down to the nitty gritty and say, this shit happened to me and this is how I felt, this is how I got through it and this is what, you know, what how it affected me um and this these are the people in my life and this is my family and this is how they were raised and so it goes on and on which is true it just you see the generations and you see what they go through and you see why your parents may go through what they went through and how it affects you and so um i haven't even gotten to her acting yet so you haven't even gotten to Bruce Reynolds. Bruce Reynolds. Burt Reynolds. Burt, you're tired. Burt Reynolds, but yeah. Tired, tired is an understatement. Right that now, is, those are the ones I um, listen to on Audible. Fun. So, so are you watching? Did you read these? I listened to three audiobooks that I have been meaning to finish up. Uh, Spoonbenders, Armada, and Artemis. So, what, what was your favorite? Um, not really going to recommend any of them, so okay. I'm not going to spend much time on it. I mean, they were okay, not great. They didn't stick in my head like Ready Player One did. So, 
I got those wrapped up, and so now I'm looking at finding something else to listen to. So okay. Uh, game of the week. Spider Man is finished. What? Fourteen. What's it about? It's a. You have to read it. Just <laughs> write it down. Fourteen. I'm not going to. If go it's about it. two lovers on a beach, I'm not. Oh, it's read not. It. Has nothing to do with anybody's feelings. It's actually about a an apartment building that is really screwed up. And the people that are in there, and they're trying to figure out how, why it's so. I mean, it's it's pretty cool. Um, my next choice might be influenced by what I've been listening to in podcasts lately. So, what is it? Uh, I just kind of got a little burned out by what's going on politically, so I just I kind of changed my taste of podcasts for the last couple of weeks. That's why I, I got through three books, is just because I turned off all the podcasts for basically two weeks worth of listening. It just got really angry and a lot of shit going on. So I said, take my mind off of it for a couple of weeks. And that's what I did. And for now, for some reason now I'm like looking for some true crime podcasts. So I've been sampling a couple like different ones to see like what, you okay? Yep. Did you get bit by something? No, I have, uh, <laughs> my hands are full of, um, I was grabbing all this firewood. Oh, uh, he's got splinters. Random. I have splinters all over my hands. Not good. You're looking for podcasts so, that are yeah, like I've true got, crime? I've got a couple true crime podcasts I'm listening to. There's um, a one, uh, the woman that, oh my gosh, she wrote about the the famous killer and then she died before her book was finished. But she, do you, you know what I'm talking about? Um, and she is true crime podcast. You should listen to um, my favorite murder. It's funny, and they all. They, I think that's what I am. But I think that's one of the ones I am listening to. It's funny. And they, yeah, I just that's all they do. I have I haven't been impressed by their storytelling because they're kind of they just they're too of, much laughy, goofy in it, and, and they, I just want something that's more like. A little bit more down and feel, but I got to give them a little bit more chance. I've only listened to a couple episodes of it, but it's still, that's my initial feeling is just, it's a lot of like, like, oh, really? Oh, really? Did that happen? Really? Well, sometimes I feel like they just read off of. Yeah. And I, I want, what I want is more of a, a storytelling format. Like, um, I love, have you heard the lore podcast? No, but I've just seen that there's a lore show. Yeah. He's, he's, he's on Amazon. Um, did it after that but he basically takes an event or a like a myth of history and mm-hmm. kind of unravels it and tells it and it's just the way he tells the story it's That's engaging cool. but they're only like half an hour long and so it's just like you get through like you know blow through five in a very very short amount of time um but it's the way he tells it. And that's kind of like I'm looking for a true crime podcast that kind of tells things in that kind of format, mm-hmm. which is probably going to lead me back into searching through Audible for some of those that are that are based on uh, nonfiction, not exactly yeah. fiction. Because there's a lot of great fiction, uh, true crime stuff that is pretty engaging. But So that's kind of where I am right now. But we're also two weeks away from the fate of our next two years and possibly further being decided. So we need to um, – politics are huge right now. So um, so, uh, so the game app of the week, uh, I finished Spider-Man. I- um, gearing up for Red Dead Redemption, which is now currently downloading because it's almost 100 gigabytes um, so it's a good thing that I have green light at home because it will take. It's Michelle McNamara. Michelle McNamara. And she writes about the Golden State Killer. That's the book you should read. I just wanted to show it. I just wanted to tell you that. There you go. That's true crime. And she did a ton of research. So, yeah, um, yeah I'll figure out. I'll find something. Okay. I'm just kind of in a myth right now. 
Okay. Which leads me into what's on our radar and what's on our queue. Like I just said, uh, Red Dead Redemption is coming out on Friday. So this whole week, my computer is, or my PS4 is downloading it in preparation for that. <gasps> I'm anxiously looking forward to disappearing into that for a couple hours. Um, hours? They say that the campaign itself just the campaign this doesn't include side missions is anywhere between 60 to 100 hours of gameplay okay that's right um which means if you throw in like all the little side missions and everything you could be talking about several hundred hours of gameplay but you know like i said if the story is told right it is a beautiful setting it looks great just to kind of just disappear into like gaming for me is a release Mm mm-hmm in much the way of like, you know, when I'm in top form and I'm out running, it's that same release, but running takes a lot of energy out of you. Sometimes you can just disappear, like you disappear into a film just for a couple hours. I and get just, distracted. That game takes me places. I get like, oh, look, and I just go wandering on my horse someplace else. I'm like, I'm not even. Yeah. So I'm really, I'm really looking forward to it. That is my biggest thing that's on my queue. Um, and in anticipation of that coming out, I'm trying to finish up. So Daredevil season three just came out. I know I haven't seen it. I haven't started um, it yet. Can't believe it. So, and one of the favorite things that I've liked about the Daredevil se- series has been Carlton Fisk. I love uh, Vincent D'Onofrio's depiction of him. And when they highlighted that he's going to be more of season three, I got really excited. So I'm looking forward to just seeing Fisk mess with. Just Charlie Cox, I mean, does he do a pretty good job? I mean, does he act? Is Daredevil the same? I, kind he, of guy? I think he's he's good enough for the character. I, I mean, mean, is he getting? Does he get? Because uh, he's been kind of sweet and kind of. Is he getting darker? Yeah. Okay. And that that's what eventually happens with. I know. know. I don't like that. Well, but you you look at it as a long story arc. You have to. You know, every. Every superhero is going to have their moment where they have to decide whether what side of the line they're going to be on. They're going to have to go through their own fire to forge who they become. And we're entering that stage with Matt. You know, he's had it on smaller instances, and now we're having the the big moment here. So I've got that, and we've got a ton of things on DVR that are starting to pop up just because it's that time of the year that everything's coming on. So I really can't catch up with everything. Like, I'm still not caught up with Legion. Mm. Um, you know, there's so much stuff in there. But I spent the last couple of weeks, like I said, ignoring politics. And anytime I had a free moment that I wasn't working on something and, you know, the girls had something that they were doing. My wife was working on schoolwork. So it's like I was watching something. So I actually went and finished up the Good Cop series. Good? No. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I kept hoping for something, but like Tony Danza's character by the end of the series, I actually liked his character by the end of the series. I ended up not liking Josh Groban's character at all. It's just okay. like, he's just this goofy cop kid. And it's like, Josh, I know you can act. Why? <laughs> but, so there's just that there. Um, DC's universe finally started launching. So we're now two episodes into Titans. I'm really liking the darkness of that show. And it's a little bit more grounded into like, Hey, there's consequences to what you do kind of thing. The same approach that Netflix kind of took with their shows a little bit, which is a little bit different take than the movies. Um, I saw Venom, saw stars born, saw Sicario two, saw skyscraper, (laughs) How was Venom? Skyscraper, yeah, it's The Rock, man. I know, but was it good? Meh. Okay. It's entertaining. (laughs) I didn't say it was good. It's entertaining. How was Venom? (sighs) Goofy. Okay. I I don't know. This this makes me want to, like, start up the secondary podcast so I can just sit there and talk about superhero stuff and, like, kind of go into stuff a little bit more deeper, but... We'll get there. Don't worry. Well, I, we've been saying that for like six months and it's just like getting people into the same room to actually talk about that. So I'm probably just going to start mumbling and recording on my own and just let it be what I, it is. I know people that could easily do this show. Um, that show. Not me. But, <laughs> Kendra. Uh, yeah, I, I think it was one of those movies that it was at its best when Tom Hardy and Venom were arguing 
in it. In and you just say head Tom and Hardy but, and so Kendra about burst into flames. I like Tom Hardy as an actor. I she loves him. Just don't know if he's the right person for Venom. Oh, speaking of um, people that make her burst into flames, uh, Frankenstein. Oh yeah, the is, one coming out with Benedict, Benedict Cumberbatch coming to. Um, we're gonna go see the it. live. Yeah, we're, the live. It's the, it's, it's on the stage. The theaters. It's, in, it's on stage in uh, Fa- Phantom. Fathom. Fathom. Um, we're going yes. to the only one she can go to because. Um, so we're going to. They switch. They switch um, characters. So one time you can see Benedict being the monster and the creature. The creature, and then the other one you can see him being the doctor. Who's who? Uh, who's playing opposite him? Um, it's been. I knew this this morning because I saw it. I was like, oh, he's the guy that used to be married to Julie. That uh, he was uh, Wester Bucket's first husband, uh, Angelina Jolie. So let's see here. Trying to Lee Miller. Yes. Yeah, the one from that's on train, Elementary. Train spotting. That's really amazing. Um. Yeah, so we're gonna go see it. He, he reads all the tabloids on his, on his spare no, time. No, I, I saw that advertisement years ago. I saw them in the magazine talking about this production, and I was like, "When are they coming to America?" So it's good to see that's coming. So we're gonna go see that. I think, which that's gonna be that'll be cool. Cool. I, I like that they do things like that. Fathom. We need more digital theater here, but um, yeah, okay. But are you? You're not done. Um, are you? I, I I mean, I'm busy wrangling children and stuff, so I don't know what I'm going to watch, but I will watch something. I'm, I'm try to almost, see. almost done. You're pretty much... I got one more line. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I figured. I'm so sorry. the stuff that's coming up, um, like I said, I still want to go see First Man. Me too. But I think I'm going to miss the window on IMAX. I don't know if it's already out of IMAX. Um, and with such a poor first weekend, I don't know how long it's going to stick at theaters. But Old Man and the Gun is out now. It was actually, it's in Pinsford Cinemas today. Um so it got a, a slightly delayed release, and that's Robert Redford's last film. Oh, yes. There we go. I have to go see that. Um, Sisters Brothers comes out this week. Western, I might be sucked into it. <laughs> um, and then Bohemian Rhapsody on November 2nd. So, Aww. And the more I see about like uh, Remy Malek's work for that makes me more intrigued. Um, there was a, a nice piece that they had about... You know, they brought in all these choreographers to uh, help him. And then they realized he doesn't need a choreography. He needs a a movement. And they worked on like all the the mannerisms and idiosyncrasies to make him every movement, every flick of the guitar, the way he handles a microphone. Interesting. Be what Freddie would do. It was Um, really cool. You mentioned, I think it was you, The Haunting of Hill House on Netflix. Yes. Did you start watching it? I did not. You didn't? No, I just haven't had time. Did you? I wanted to. It was on my queue. Okay. Well, okay. I, I started watching Unfortunately, when Daredevil came out on Friday, it went to the top of the queue. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that, so I would have done the same thing. I, I just, yeah, I'm not on top of these things. Um, so I started watching this. Jason hates it. I'm just going to put that out there. Um Hates it because it's not good, or hates it because it's too scary and doesn't. No, want to not too stay scary. He doesn't like some of the stuff that they deal with. And he just thinks it's. He doesn't like. He doesn't like. There are things that just bother him that he doesn't like to hear about or watch movies about. He just it's like yuck. Um, the first episode, I was drawn into and as it keeps going I am losing interest so I think I'm I think I'm three or four in and I don't know if I care anymore so that's not good that's an honest assessment no I feel like it's just um, they're not building the suspense as much they're just, I don't know. It's just not, it's not. There's some great, there's some great actors in there too. Mm-hmm. It pisses me off. When, anyway, so um, I'm going to be watching Daredevil. I really would want to see, see that. Um, I obviously went to see, I saw Veronica. I don't, I don't particularly recommend that one. 
uh, they had tons of, well, there was a couple articles about Veronica being this movie where you couldn't finish it. It was so terrifying. You can't finish the movie. It, no, you can finish it, people. It's fine. Uh, Kendra and I finished it. It was fine. Um, on my radar. Hmm. Do I want to see Venom? Not now. Um, in the queue, because I, well, this might be on the radar, actually, because I don't think it's out yet. So I, I may have. Homecoming is coming out with Netflix. Uh, I think it's Netflix. And it's with uh, Julie Roberts. That's all I really need to know. <laughs> okay. Um, I love her. And uh, first man I'm going to go see no matter what. It's just I really want to see it. I think that it's probably my type of movie. It's probably not what other people are looking for. But I'm okay with that. Um, and it's not just because of Ryan Gosling. I really. I didn't say a thing. I'm saying that. Said, me the eyes the, I am saying that to <laughs> everyone out there. I love this man, but it's not because of You're that. You're going to see it because of Claire Foy. I am. That's why I'm going. I'm going because re- I'm very interested about um, space. The stuff that he mentally goes through and their marriage. It's, I yeah, because I dig that stuff. People, you should read and watch the and from the, the earth from the, the earth to the moon. Tom I, Hanks thing. I, I've. Have. Yeah. I have. You I sure? did. A long time. A while ago. Okay. Just right? checking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Bohemian Rhapsody definitely. Daredevil is happening tonight. Uh, and then I am. When are we having the show again? November what? November 2nd. In November 4th. Sorry. Okay. So I will have seen. I'm super excited to see Rocky Horror show. Black Friars. Black Friars, because I'm not. I'm not going to say anything on here. I'm just saying that Kendra comes home and tells me some stuff that's pretty freaking awesome. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. Mm-hmm. So I'm should I'm, be fun. I'm yeah. I think so. And Tony, back to you. <laughs> Sorry. Um. So I yeah. I've been watching children lately. So I've been able to watch a lot because you have to watch what you watch with the kids around. My Do daughter's you have in the echo. For the grab bag. I. Uh, I'm going to see Bohemian because my wife said a long time ago she wants to see that. So we have to go see that on date night. So we'll probably see it second day when it comes out. So there's a good there's a good chance that all three of us will actually see the same <laughs> film before it comes out and we right. talk about it. Be awesome. So now, If you guys mentioned doing film, I go see it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. But uh, other than that, <laughs> I'm going to do more reading, I think, because that's safe. And daughter won't hear anything because I read it in my head. Um I have to p- finish up some recording stuff. I What are you reading? I don't know yet. I've been reading a lot of plays because the more I read plays, the better playwright I become. Um, I, go I, ahead. I ordered that that play that um, Michael C. Hall is in right now on Broadway. Um, so I ordered that and I'm going to read that and I'm going to try to figure out how the hell Kendra and I can get into a car, drive, park on a side street, Go see this show because the tickets are insanely cheap. What Watch it and then drive home. What play is he in? Um, he is in. Well, we just have to look it up here. Tom Payne, or is there something else? I think so. Okay. Um, Dexter. Okay. Um, well, yeah. So I call actors by their character names. Nice. Um, yeah. I mean. We're just going to because of him. Just take a bus. Take the bus down there. And no enjoy way. the ride together. No and way. Why? I'm take the bus. I like the train. It? Take the bus. You get there soon. You can sleep on the bus. And I get... could go to the Albany and take the train. In take the Poughkeepsie. bus. I don't want to take the bus. It may sting, but it's faster. You don't have to worry about... Anyway. We're going to try bus, people. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm going to read more plays and uh, hopefully I can get my play finished and... It's really weird going from screenwriting to playwriting, but I've done it before, so I'll do it again. I always do. That's how, about for me, I think. How long is your play? I mean, how many acts? Uh, I write one act plays that are like sixty pages, so it's not really a one. It's not really a you know a one act one act per se. But I don't like act breaks unless I have to have them. So okay, yeah, cool. I think that wraps up our show. Mm. I think so. Well, where can we find you, Valerie? <laughs> I always say it. So that they can ring your doorbell and... Yeah, at home. (laughs) 
Yeah, no. I, I will be at home. She'll doing be giving out candy for Halloween. Halloween and the, no, I always have a thing. Of Halloween. If you if you want to just get a whole bunch of candy, we're gone. So we just leave the bucket, and you know, you just come get the candy you want. How much candy do you end up with by the time you come back home, or is it all gone? Oh, sometimes it's sometimes we have candy left. I mean, it is, but we have the switch switch. The the best plan I've ever seen is go to the store, buy all the candy that you want to give out, come home, turn off the lights, and sit on the couch and eat it in the dark. Easy peasy. Um, we have the switch. The switch switch comes. The what? The switch switch. So the switch switch is your child. You're probably thinking, oh, geez. Did you have to invite the switch witch to come to your house? Which witch is the switch witch? The switch witch, haha, is um, you leave your candy out. You have some candy before bed because it is Halloween. You leave your candy out, and then the switch witch switches your candy out for like a, a toy that you've been wanting. And that way you don't have a child eating candy. Wanting candy, asking for candy, getting sick. Ugh. So I have a 14-year-old and a 12-year-old, and this is how we've handled it. Every year, they each pick 10 pieces of candy. They're allowed one candy before they go to bed. The rest of the candy gets like, okay, we pull out the stuff that we're never going to eat. We take that in to work and donate it, and everything else gets put into a shared bag bucket. That sits in the cupboard for about... Six to eight months, and <laughs> nobody touches it except for me. Oh, dude. Because they eventually, like, with their 10 pieces, because they, like, they zone in on, like, I only have 10 pieces, so I need to, like, mm-hmm. you know, take wow. my time. That months later, there'll be, like, three or four pieces left in their 10-piece bag, and nobody's touched the other bag. So I'm like, this worked out perfectly. So, like, I've grown up with two girls that are not, like, infatuated with Our Our candy. girls aren't either infatuated with candy. It's, I just, mean, it's one of those like proud parent moments like, yes, it actually worked. They're not really, they don't care about that. They don't care about trying Coke and Pepsi and all that. They don't really care about it. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Sorry. Coca-Cola. That pause, that pause right Coca-Cola. there. Coca-Cola. And um, they're not big on soda, I guess. My kids will not drink it. They just, they don't care. I stopped drinking it a year ago and I don't miss it. Unfortunately, I'm addicted to I it. But water I'm not addicted to that. I'm Have I even put chocolate. it in front of them? They're just like, ew, no, get that away from me. Well, and they try it. They're like, ugh. It does no, they won't even time. try it. Like, they've never even, like, had a sip. They see it and they're just like, no, don't want it. Mm. Mm. Like, not good for you. Yes. Anyway, switch switch. Invite get the switch switch <laughs> to your house if you want to. I'm just saying that I think that she does a good job. And the, the dentist likes the switch switch. Does the switch switch have a name? No, it's a switch witch. Alyssa Sisterovich? No, just the, just the switch witch. I don't know her name. I don't know her. I've never seen her. Is this a real thing? The switch witch, yeah. Okay, I'm just checking to see. I'm like Googling switch witch. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. the switch witch. The switch witch. <laughs> I know that there is one in Colorado. <laughs> I'm thinking of all the things that rhyme with witch. Right. I'm just like, no, don't want to say that right now, but okay. But the switch witch is nice. So she's not a bitch. She's not a bitch. She's <laughs> helping your teeth. Okay. But she's a fan. She is. <laughs> she threw it out there. I got it she in. She is a friend of it's like a the movie dentist. Right it didn't come from the dentist, though. This is not a dentist thing, but I think the dentist does approve of the switch Santa witch. Santa Claus's long lost cousin. cousin. Uh-huh. Or the Wicked Witch of the West, tooth long lost fairy, cousin. Easter Bunny's Dude, worst friend. The tooth, tooth Fairy's long lost cousin? Well, I think the Tooth Fairy and the Switch Witch probably know each other. Oh, maybe. The Where Switch the Witch is actually the Tooth Fairy in disguise. It's what she dresses up on as Halloween. That's fantastic theory. Children's book. <laughs> Children's book. She that likes to dress up too. <laughs> Why not? I mean, she wants to shed that white fairy outfit every once in a while. Yeah. All right. On that note, so where can we find you? <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I never really know. I am rarely on Facebook, so I'm not going to give you on Facebook because I just barely go there at all. 
So uh, I'm VB Vidmar on Twitter and Penny Lane 64 on Instagram. So head to Twitter, get her tweets. See what yeah. movies she's watching and what she's up to. And I will put out uh, the, um, I think it's going to be easier for me to do the, uh, all of the trailers on Twitter. I know that you can get them on Twitter already. You probably don't need me, but I can put them on there anyway. Anthony. Well, I just found out that my Instagram has a new name. So I'm now under Aunt Carter 85. So it's A-N-T-C-A-R-T-E-R 85, my birthday year. I like that, Aunt Carter. Yeah. So you want to find me? My Facebook is still the same, Anthony.Carter167, which I'm not sure what that's about. So do you like, do do you accept people you don't know? Well, here's the thing. Um, Sometimes. On Instagram, I'm wide open now for another month, and then I'm going to close my doors, and the vault will open again probably in February or March sometime. Get your time in now, folks. So if you want to be subscribed to my channel, I've always had shit. So I have a lot of people, like fitness people, like attaching to my profile on Instagram. I'm like, okay, well, I guess I can be nice and let you, because I'm goaltending, and it's like that fitness, blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, I'm closing the gate soon. I I guess it's what you use Instagram for. Right. Like if you used it to primarily talk about movies or talk about hockey, yeah. Yeah. I don't use it to really talk about my family. It's usually always my dogs or my photos or my video work. You told told us and you gave us some type of way of getting into the Cultural Stew podcast Twitter account to post from. That's for us. I know, mm-hmm. but I was um, thinking about coming up with a film one for myself, but maybe that would be bad. I was thinking about doing one that was just like. Are you? No, are you talking about Instagram? Yeah, not, not no Twitter. Twitter. I don't know if kids are on Twitter. What are the kids on now? We don't even know. Snapchat. I don't understand like Snapchat. I just don't get talk it. App or talk, what's, uh, and now they or have like app? Instagram stories. The basic gist of it. Don't get kids it. Kids aren't on social. <laughs> yeah, we're talking to people that watch movies that are, yeah. they get it. But Facebook, Facebook's filled with people, this stuff. Like Kendra's always on Facebook. I'm just, mm-hmm. I'm Jason is too. I'm not on it. Not so my, my daughter turned 14 and we're like, so do you have any interest in a Facebook account? It's like, ew, no. Why? Mm. <laughs> Thank God. I, I, I told like, Zoe there was no way. It was the hell. most interesting reaction because I'm like, okay. I'm not so. doing that. I'm sorry. That just opens them up. Yeah, it would have been with a monitor, monitored account. Yeah, I wouldn't have let her just like have free reign of doing whatever she wanted. But. No, I just don't want anybody to bully them that way. Yeah. Mm. Bullying is going to happen whether you want it to or not. The social it's bullying, just, I don't want. I don't it's more bullying. of teaching people how to respond to it and know how to deal with it. Unfortunately, social bullying is it's going to happen in one way or another. It happens already. I mean, grade school, it's happening. Yep. People will always be assholes. But fight it. Yep. Um, yeah. As as become my my political slogan: Don't be a dick. Don't be a dick. Yeah, bumper sticker. Yeah. I put that on my car. Yeah. I used to have a bumper sticker that said "Mean people suck." Mm. That was mine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've talked long enough. That's three and a half hours or two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Three and a half. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Uh, Hope the, we got the one you hour to, show that turned into two and a half hours. Hope we got you to Albany or almost to Albany. <laughs> uh, Syracuse. We'll get this worked back. out yet. All right. Well, you can find me, uh, GF Media or GF Media CEO, pretty much everywhere. Um, see some of my film work, see some of my photo work. Um, here are some of my political complaints, whatever. Uh, you can find us at culturalstew.net, at culturalstew.net on Twitter, and culturalstew on Facebook.
The intro and break music is Please Listen Carefully by Jazeer, available through the Creative Commons license from Free Music Archive. The outgoing music is provided by Epidemic Sound. Please see our show notes for details on what the outgoing song is and who it is by. And also, as always, if you have a piece of music that you'd like us to play or consider playing, please contact us today. you've heard want to continue to hear more please consider patreon what is patreon you ask patreon is a content creator support site a way for people to support the things they love and allow creators to continue creating the content that they love please consider heading over to patreon.com slash gf media and becoming a patreon supporter today